From the Cash Valley, this is College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by GEICO. A critical matchup in the Mountain West Conference Mountain Division. Number 21, Boise State. The only loss out of conference against BYU, against the Utah State Aggies. Those two losses on the road against Pac-12 opponents. So Boise State, Utah State, and Air Force, all 2-0 right now in the Mountain West Mountain Division. With Aaron Taylor, Ginny Dell, I'm Carter Blackburn. Well, fortunately for the Broncos, we like to talk about big bowl games and rankings and all those things around Boise State football. But this is a big game for both of these programs. It is a big game, and I get the feeling that this Utah State team is ready to play. I think they really remember that beatdown they got in Boise a year ago. They know what's on the line. The winner of tonight's game is going to be in the driver's seat in the Mountain Division. The big question for Boise State, Jeremy McNichols, a game-time decision after a goal-line collision last week against Colorado State. How big is that? It's huge. He leads the nation in total touchdowns, 12 on the ground, 2 through the air, so if he can't go tonight, the rest of the the team is going to have to step up, particularly two freshman quarterback Brett Rippon. The kid's only a true freshman, but he does a nice job of scanning the field, got a high football IQ, and hey, when you have this much time to throw the football, you're going to be able to drop some dimes like he does right in between coverage on the money. But that's not all he does. He's extremely accurate. He's got good mechanics just for a true freshman, but he puts the ball in the back of the end zone on the money just like you're supposed to. Well, he's been solid as the plan B quarterback for Boise State. For the Aggies, it's been Kent Myers who has taken over as their plan B solid as well. He stepped up. He's 7-1 and one as a starter. This kid is a playmaker. A couple weeks ago against Colorado State, he did it with his legs. Colorado State brought a lot of pressure, so it was up to Young to be able to move around and get things going. Boise State will try and attack him the same way tonight, but that's not all. He needs the other playmakers to step up. Guys like Wyatt Houston and Wyatt Wide receiver Devontae Robinson have to bring their A games as well. Some more of those supporting players who need to make a big difference are Geico difference makers, the running backs. Last week they ran all over Fresno State. Devontae Mays, 93 yards, three touchdowns. Lawan Hunt, two rushing touchdowns at Fresno State. And for more we're on the Aggies, head coach Matt Wells with our Ginny Dell. Coach, a lot has been made of how well you manage this quarterback position, but you told us yesterday that it's because of your defense that you've been able to do that. What do you need to see from your defense here tonight? Well, they're going to, first of all, have to stop the runs. First thing we talk about each and every week is stopping the run and being able to control the pass. Clearly a win tonight will put you in the driver's seat in the Mountain Division, but beyond that, what would the victory mean to your program? It's just a big, it's a, it's a game from a programmatic standpoint. Where are we? Uh, where do we want to go? This is another step in that process. Good luck, Coach. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of respect between the two head coaches, Matt Wells and Brian Harson. They kind of came up the ranks together, both played quarterback at their alma mater and then offensive coordinators and now head coaches both at their alma maters. Brian Harson in his second season as head coach of the Boise State Broncos. A beautiful night in Logan, Utah. Sun just went down at 69 degrees and a sellout crowd here at Merlin Olsen Field, Maverick Stadium in Logan, Utah. Utah State will receive the opening kickoff. Tyler Rossa boots it through the back of the end zone for a touchback. So Utah State will get it at the 25. Our Chick-fil-A starting lineups begin for the Utah State Aggies. With the sophomore quarterback from Rowlett, Texas, Kent Myers. Last week versus Fresno State, 260 yards, a touchdown. Two weeks ago, you saw the rushing yards. 7-1 and one as an Aggie starting quarterback over the last two years. His offensive coordinator, Josh Heupel, says he is as confident a guy as he has been around, and he's been around a lot of confident guys. <laughs> yes, he has. He's going to need that confidence tonight against a top-10 defense in the Broncos. LaJuan Hunt in the backfield next to Myers. Play fake on first down. Myers, deep shot, first play, looking for Sharp, just overthrows him. Locked in man coverage with Dante Dion. And look at the rest of Josh Heupel's offense. Well, Utah State offense will be tested tonight by one of the country's better defenses, so it's going to need its playmakers like wide receiver Hunter Sharp, who was just targeted there, to show up and be a major factor in this game tonight. Sharp was a guy who was recruited by the Broncos, said he probably would have gone to Boise State, but didn't qualify academically, so junior college, and now he's a Utah State Aggie. Meyer 
Myers pulls it on second down to make it third down and long. A look at the Bronco deep. One of this team's leaders is senior safety Darian Thompson, and his physical tackling and reliable playmaking ability are a big reason why the Broncos have this top 10 defense. They are particularly good on third down getting after the passer. This is going to be a very important down for the rest of the night. Thompson and the rest of the Broncos bearing down for third and seven. Myers over the middle, batted away, incomplete, and it's a three and out for the Aggies on their first crack at the Boise State D. Boise State is explosive offensively, so that's not the start that Utah State wanted a week ago. They had a four and out. They got a first down on the first play of the game and then went three and out. You do not want to be able to punt this ball as to this Boise State offense. You have to be able to control it, but a great start for the Broncos on that side of the ball. Do everything Shane Williams Rhodes back to receive the punt from Aaron Dalton. Williams Rhodes backs up inside the 30. With a seam on the right side, Shane Williams Rhodes sprinting across midfield. Williams Rhodes takes it inside the Aggie 35, and it's another hot start for Boise State. 38 yard return. Field position is such an important factor of football games, Carter. Your chances to score a touchdown increase by 11 fold if you receive the ball on the plus side of the 50. Put another way, Boise State, whatever their chances were before, are 11 times as likely to score a touchdown because of that last return. First and 10, Boise State. Jeremy McNichols is not in the backfield. Kelsey Young starts at running back. Rippon gives it to him. There's a flag down on the first down carry, but that is big for Boise State as McNichols for now, not on the field, the game time decision. Offside, defense, number 22, five yard penalty, repeat first down. It's our referee Reggie Smith, our Chick-fil-A starting lineup for the Broncos. Led by the quarterback, Brett Rippon. Twice through for eight touchdowns in a game in high school in Spokane, Washington. Only he and Kellen Moore have done that in Washington high school history. Rippon checks down on first and five. Kelsey Young slips and falls. McNichols comes out in street clothes now on the first series for Boise State. That's huge for them. Him not being able to go means the rest of those players are going to have to step up, including Kelsey Young. The most touches Young has had in the game this year was in week one against Washington with 13 touches. He's going to need to be productive tonight against a very stout and attacking Aggie defense. On second down, Rippon throws the bubble to the outside. Shane Williams Rhodes across the 30. And we look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineup for the Broncos offense. Well, with McNichols out, tonight's workload's going to fall largely on the shoulders of Kelsey Young. So Young must be productive to keep Boise State balanced and in manageable third down situations. Left tackle Reese Adiombo heads to the sideline. So Archie Lewis, the sophomore, back up in there for third down and five. Expect some pressure off this outside edge. Here comes the pressure. Rippon, downfield incomplete, and a double coverage intended for Thomas Spurback, the deep threat. Marwin Evans there in coverage. Great response that time by Utah State after the big return and their offense going three and out. They hold, and that was because of the pressure. This defense likes to change the picture on the offensive line, move and stem at the last minute, and that forced the errant throw on third down and brings up the field goal. Great stop by the Aggies. 46-yard attempt from Rasa. Missed a 55-yarder last week at Colorado State. But this 46-yard kick is easily good. Boise State off the big return from Shane Williams Rhodes. Three on the board. Carson, happy. A better network, as explained by backup quarterback. College football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
And by new DQ Bakes. Artisan style sandwiches, only at your DQ. Packed student section, packed house tonight here at Maverick Stadium, which is under major renovations. 3-0 lead for Boise State on Utah State here after the field goal from Tyler Rasa. He will kick it away. You see those major construction effort on the see. west side? That looks to be west, yes. Yep. That's where the sun went down, so I'm going to go with west. More on that from uh, Fiddy Dell later. Not the sundown, but the construction. <laughs> Clearly, Carter was a boy scout. <laughs> Rosso will kick north to south, and he muffs it. So a little squibber that's going to be downed at the 20. Downed at the 30, actually. Picked up by one of the upmen for Utah State. After Ross has slipped, so we look at our E-Trade game plan tonight's key questions, beginning with, can Utah State run the ball in the Broncos? It's going to be very important for them to stay balanced and attack this defense, so they have to be able to run the football against a Boise State defense that doesn't like that. Can the Aggies rattle ripping? They did on that last third down play. And what's the McWeapon factor? Is it going to be a happy meal, or will they grimace? Ooh. Jeremy McNichols, yeah, they nicknamed him McWeapon. Now that's more along the lines of a grimace, right? Because <laughs> he's a street playing, coach. Yes, yes. They got good backs. They need to step up. Myers screen blown up immediately on the outside by Darian Thompson. We talked about him in the opening lineups. He is a physical playmaker with tremendous instincts. You're just going to see him. He reads this and fights through the pressure and the block on that outside. As the furthest most guy outside, it's Thompson's job to get upfield, force everything back inside. He is a factor early in this game already. Four interceptions this year, 18 in his career. He's the active leader in the FBS for career interceptions. Myers gives it on second and 15. It's Hunter Sharp on the carry, and nothing doing there. And here's the problem. The last two first down opportunities of Utah State, they've decided to throw the football. That then puts them behind the chains, which really limits your play call sheet. And here they come up with a third and long situation. I think the Aggies, if they can pick up this first down, need to get that ground game going. Three and out the first time they had it, and now third and very long against the excellent Bronco defense. Out of the backfield, Hunt slipping his way across the 35. He has a first down across the 50. Hunt shoved down near the Bronco 25. 53 yards. Kamale Correa finally tracks down Hunt. Tackling is so important for this Boise State defense. They brought a middle pressure, and there's Thompson, the playmaker we just talked about, taking a poor angle and missing a tackle, and that tackle right there that he missed cost them 53 yards and a first down. The explosive play is starting to roll for Utah State. The last couple of weeks against Colorado State and Fresno State, who have been struggling. Myers pulls it on first and ten. Drag down. Kamale Correa gets the tackle for loss. Correa is just a tremendous playmaker. The coach has really talked about his ability. The way he's practicing better, he's taking it a little bit more seriously. Really good rushing the passer, but the element of his game that I've been impressed with is the way that he plays the run. He did an excellent job on that last play. Had a sack last week, his third. They're leading the conference with 12 of them last year. Got to know where number eight's on the field. He's somebody that can affect the game. Myers on second down. Design run, bootleg. Myers, first down to the 11 for Kent Myers. James finally makes the stop. 17 more yards for Myers. Boise State's going to bring some pressure off this outside edge, but what that does is it creates a gap in space that Meyer's able to take advantage of, and then it's just those legs that we talked about in the open. He's an effective playmaker on the ground with his legs, and he made the Broncos pay big time that last run. Mays in the backfield with Myers. Mays is going to take it inside the 10. 
Inside the five, the junior from Livingston, Texas, DeMonte Mays. Nice physical run there, and it looks like Boise State's a little stunned. After a big play, you want to get up to the line of scrimmage and run another play to catch that defense slipping a little bit. That's setting the tone inside there. This is a very important area of the field for this Aggie offense. Boise State has been solid in the red zone. Their defense has been solid overall. They were awesome a week ago, five for five, all touchdowns. Mays stretching near the first down inside the one. Miles finally makes the stop. They're not going to give him a first down. So third down and very short inside the two. Yeah, now they're going to bring some big bodies in there. Ricky Ali Afua, Siwa Taufa, some D linemen in the backfield look for a lead play. Isolation, just beef on beef up front. Myers hands off. Mays. Short of the goal line, does he have the first down? Looked like he got he tripped. He did not. David Moala, number 51, had a great block right there, but you see his feet just hit Kent Myers, the quarterback. That's simple execution. Brings up a big decision here for the Aggies. I think they should go for it. They've got to get this into the end zone. But remember, they can pick up a first down, but I think they're going to talk about it. The ruling on the field that the ball carrier was short of the line to gain is under further review. So our replay booth led by Thomas Robinson wants to take a look at that one. And again, in college football, it is up to the sole discretion of the replay official. So he's looking at the same thing we're looking at here. Devontae Mays, where is he down? Hard to see kind of from that angle. The line is just outside the one. His knee does not touch before he launches and elongates and straightens. So it's going to be wherever he touches after he takes that step right there, the next body part. It's not the bottom of his foot or the bottom of his hand, his elbow. But it's hard to see. You see his right elbow touches the one that's carrying the football. It touches, but from that angle, you can't tell where that yard line is. Replay officials tell us all the line. They look for a clear picture. Not a whole lot clear because of the number of bodies. It's looking like it's somewhere in there. Which would be just short of that line to gain for the first down, which is where the Reggie Smith screw marked it on the field. This is only the ninth trip that Boise State has allowed an opponent all season long to get down here inside the 20. And I said that the Aggies have to get inside the end zone by that. I mean, they need a touchdown here. Of course, they can get a first down. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's fourth down. Fourth down. So, Utah State, prior to the review, had the offense on the field going forward on fourth down. And that's exactly what Matt Wells is looking at here. It's interesting. You've had a great drive. You'd love to capitalize on it early and get some momentum. If you go for it on fourth down and don't get it, that can energize a Boise team on the road. And I don't know if that's a smart thing to do. Moala, Tofa, Mays all in the backfield. Fourth and one behind Myers. Play fake. Toss. Touchdown, Utah State. On fourth and one, Wyatt Houston holds it in. Fourth and one, play action from the two-yard line results in the touchdown, the first of Wyatt Houston's junior year. The Aggies taking a play out of the Boise State playbook with that play action deep down inside in the red zone. And true to form, they are six for six for touchdowns on their last six possessions going back to last week. Seven nothing lead for Utah State. It was nearly another three and out before Hunt breaks the big one. Followed up by Myers setting up the Aggies inside the 10. And play action for an Aggie TD.
field goal for Boise State on the opening drive, and then Utah State responds with a nine play, 71 yard touchdown, ends up with fourth and one from the two yard line. Wyatt Houston touchdown. Well, this is what their defense is looking at those big bodies and defensive linemen. They're going to respond to run, and what that allows is Wyatt Houston to be able to get outside and skate. I think that that's supposed to be number four Darian Thompson's guy in man to man coverage, but because he lacked good eye discipline and was peeking in the backfield, it allowed Houston to go wide open for the easy touchdown. That was so close to the three and out for Utah State. You pointed out when Thompson missed the tackle, opened up the door for the big play for the Aggies. He's been such a playmaker for him for a lot of years, but he hadn't started out so well early in this ballgame. Touchback Broncos will have it at the 25. We finally look at the Utah State defensive starters. Well, when you look at Utah State, Boise State likes to run the ball, so the best chance that this Utah State defense has to win its matchup is if nose guard David Moala and the rest of that Aggie front seven can control the line of scrimmage, which should be quite a bit easier with McNichols out tonight. Mawala was in there for that goal line on offense as well. The Swiss Army now. The senior from Inglewood, California, nose guard. Empty backfield, first and ten. Rippin, screen, Williams, Rhodes, slips away from the first man, but the Aggies rally to the football. Moala right in there in the mix with Kyler Backroll. I've been really impressed, Carter, with how well both of these teams tackle. When you flip the film on and you see a lot of these guys run into the football, good things happen. That's also when you can cause turnovers. Great effort by both of these defenses tonight could be the difference in this game. And the thing that everyone talks about around football, Lack of tackling. Both these teams do it well. Ripping off play action. Here's the deep shot downfield. Knocked away. Anderson almost got it on the rebound. Intended for Chaz Anderson. Jalen Davis, step for step. Jalen Davis in tight coverage. What I liked what he did is he was in tight press man coverage, which put him in a position to be able to mirror. Now, I'll tell you this. They could have called pass interference with his right hand. He was all over Chaz Anderson before that football got there. But you got to give him credit for being aggressive. But he got away with one there. Minus two yards for Boise State so far. Five plays, all passes for the Broncos. And now they're in third and long again. Watch a screen or a draw here. Interesting to see what the Aggies do. Do they come after it or sit back? Just do get the snap off on third and long. Incomplete intended for Kelsey Young. The Aggies get a three and out. On the second Boise State drive, Nick Vigil gets the pressure. With Chucky Keaton under center as the quarterback, this Aggie offense has gotten a lot of the credit for how well Utah State has done over the year, but we're seeing it again tonight. The true strength of this team has been, and certainly tonight, early on in this game, been that defense that's been very well coached by defensive coordinator Kevin Klune. Rippin has been solid in his first two road starts. Of the Boise State offense off to a slow start. Short punt, Sharp grabs it, fair catch at the 40. Aggies a touchdown drive last time they had it, 7-3. Welcome back to Maverick Stadium. The Aggies have a 7-3 lead. These two head coaches have a lot in common. They're both coaching at the alma maters. They're both two of the youngest coaches in college football right now, and they have a link to former quarterback Adam Kennedy. Kennedy was the player here at Utah State in 2011. Under then quarterback coach Matt Wells. A year later, Chucky e. Keaton emerged, and with one year left of eligibility, Kennedy wanted to transfer. Wells called Brian Harson at Arkansas State and said, I might have a quarterback for you. In 2013, Kennedy transferred to Arkansas State, leading them to a great record and a bowl win, which upped Harson's resume and helped him get hired at Boise State. Guys, I think Harson owes Wells a thank you here. Yeah, I think, I, I think, you know, kind of got that impression from Matt, hey? But yeah, it's as you said, both very good friends, and they kind of came up as coordinators, quarterbacks, coordinators, and now head coaches as Tanner Vallejo makes a nice stop on Lawan Hunt. Been very impressed with Tanner Vallejo. He was a key player in the Fiesta Bowl against Arizona last year and led the team in tackles 
as a nickelback. They moved him inside, so his production hasn't quite been this year what it was a year ago, but he's still a playmaker all over the field and leads his defense, in my opinion. The Bronco defense had given up only seven touchdowns all year until the last drive for Utah State. Myers takes off and gets to the 44. And they had only given up three red zone touchdowns all season, which is amazing. But Utah State, to their credit, with some good blocking up front and some very creative play calling, found a way to make it four. Third down is when they broke the big one last possession with Lawan Hunt. And this is a third and manageable. It's a third and medium. This is what you want to be able to do is win on early downs because you want as many options as you can have here on third down. Myers, the sophomore quarterback, on third and six. Good pocket, delivers. First down for Utah State. That's Brandon Swindle with just his third catch of the year for 17 yards. Brandon Swindle's one of those players they want to see step up. He hasn't been very productive this year, but what you're going to notice is a ton of time. They only rush three. They drop eight in the coverage, but Swindle does a good job of finding an open hole in that zone defense for the big first down. Dante Dion and Marion Thompson finally make the stop. Another big gain on third down for the Aggies. Play fake. Myers pressure this time. Correa pressures him, and he's dropped at the 40 by Chancellor James, the nickel. James will get credit for the sack. We talked about Kamale Correa and his ability to be able to come off that outside edge. He's just a playmaker right here. He times the snap pretty good and gets a good jump off. The tackle misses a little bit with his punch because Correa knocks his hands down. And then it's just the rest of that defense folding back in to get the sack. Tackle play for Aggies this year has been up and down. Myers misfires on second down. So here's third and long again for the Aggies. These were the situations that the Aggies wanted to avoid, Carter, third and long. Because when you look at this Broncos defense, they've got 15 sacks on the year. They are now 16 because of that last one that they just got. If you're the Aggies, you may want to think about going with something safe or a high percentage pass here. Because we talked about those two guys, man. Darian Thompson and Dante Dion are ball hawks. They can't afford to turn the football over here on third down trying to pick up a first. Sharp in the backfield. He's going to take it. Sharp gets to the 34, and Josh Heifel and Matt Williams to the device here. Well, I think it's a smart play call. You've had some momentum. Your defense is playing outstanding. You don't have to be aggressive and push the ball down the field because of it. And the kicker, Jake Thompson, comes on. Now, Thompson kicks the long ones. He's only a two-for-eight career field goal kicker, but he attempts the long ones, including this from 51. Only kick this year was a 48-yarder good versus Colorado State. The junior from Logan, Jake Thompson, from 51. And it is good from 51 for Jake Thompson. A 10-3 lead for Utah State. Thompson with plenty of leg from 51. And the once impenetrable Boise State defense has given up 10 points on the last two Aggie drives. Ten three start for Utah State on Boise State. October officially Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We here at CBS Sports Network honored to be a part of our first college football bowl game, the Auto Nation Cure Bowl, presented by Florida Hospital, which benefits the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Mark your calendars December 19, 7 p.m. on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Pink on the helmets of Utah State tonight. A lot of pink in the stands. Aaron and I have on our pink ties. Proud to support the cause, and we will be there in Orlando. With Jenny Dell and our crew for the Cure Bowl. 
Touchback for Boise State, and the Broncos have struggled early against this Aggie defense. Yeah, well, they came out throwing the football, and the Aggies have been bringing some pressure. That was just a simple tunnel screen, a great big stop on third down, and then good aggressive pressure on the outside edges, playing some man-to-man -man coverage, breaks up a... Big throw down the field by Chaz Anderson. We talked about Kevin Kloon, the defensive coordinator, doing a really nice job with this defense being aggressive. I would fully and clearly expect and hope that Boise State tries to run the football here. Six plays, all passes, only one play for positive yards for Boise State. And now first run of the game, Devin Demas. And they got gas. Utah State stemmed themselves out of the play. They stunted, which means right before the ball snap, everybody shoots to a gap. What happens is you get moving, and you can move out and create some big holes, and that's exactly what Boise State did there. Second down, Demas dropped as soon as he touches it for another negative play. Jordan Nielsen, the senior, tackle for loss. That defensive line is so well, Coach Carter. One of the things I noticed was their hands. Why the hands inside on the defensive line? And they're moving a little bit, but they just get upfield, keep their shoulders square. There's nowhere for him to run. And I think this Boise State offense is already feeling the loss of Jeremy McNichols. That offensive line's got to do a better job, though. There's a penalty flag on the field as things are going awry all over the place. Call from Reggie Smith. There is no foul for an illegal substitution. First charge timeout, Boise State, 30 seconds. Third down, sorry buddy, third down's really been a problem for Boise State this year. They're extremely good on defense on that side of the ball, but they're 92nd in the FBS on third down, and on the road they're even worse, only 24%. This is going to be a big down for these guys to be able to convert this and keep them chains moving. And 0 for 2 tonight for Boise State, so... You can't put this all on the, the lack of Jeremy McNichols in the lineup. Game time decision for the sophomore running back, do everything player for Boise State. Most touchdowns of anybody in the country. McNichols unable to go tonight after a goal line collision a week ago against Colorado State. But you have to factor that in for the Broncos and the lack of offensive production so far. Yeah, and penetration causes lost yardage plays just like it did on that first run that we saw from Young and Demas. Ripping from the shotgun. Pressured and sacked. Loses the football. It's loose and scooped by Utah State. Inside the 15. The freshman Rippin sacked, fumbled, recovered by the Aggies on a huge defensive play from Utah State. Ali Afua recovers it. Keep your eye right here. He's going to spy the quarterback. When pressure comes, he's going to hang back. He's going to come on that other side. Then they green dog it. When there's pressure, they pin their ears back and they come after it, perfectly bottling up Brett Rippin, the true freshman quarterback that pops the ball up with a costly turnover deep down in the red zone here in the first quarter. Credit Ali Afua with the sack, and then Kyler Fackrell gets the fumble recovery. So first and 10 for Utah State, just outside the 10-yard line. Carter, remember a year ago, Boise State on the road, a lot of things going right against the Air Force Academy. Five turnovers was the difference in that game. They got to do a much better job of protecting that football. And if you're Utah State, you have to think about scoring a touchdown here to stick the dagger in this team, take all the wind out of their sails, which means that this Bronco defense has to find a way to stand up and force a field goal here. The ruling on the field that the quarterback was not down by rule prior to fumbling the ball is under further review. So we'll take a look to see if Rippon was down with possession of the football. Carter, it looks like he goes down on top of a defender, and that's when the ball pops out. Nothing touches there. The elbow, no, that ball is out. 
He falls on top of Ali Afua. Ali Afua body keeps him off the ground. And before his left elbow hits, that ball is starting to come out. The officials were all over that one. This play is going to stand. I think probably without much question. Ever further review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Well, Brett Rippon has been spectacular so far for Boise State, including the two road starts. But there's always a question. I mean, even as great as he has been, he's a true freshman. He's 18 years old, and this is a stepped-up road environment. And this is going to be the biggest test. Remember, the second half of that game a week ago against Colorado State was his worst half of football. He was 6 for 11 for 94 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. First down just outside the 10. Mays. Driven back by Ben Weaver, the weak side linebacker, leading the way. Time of Tuia in there as well. Utah State's going to want to slow this down a little bit. They're thinking touchdown the whole way. Their defense is stepping up and giving them some opportunities. I think early on in this game, field position has been the significant difference, but they've got to find a way to capitalize on this. Use Myers' legs to do it. Timeout, Utah State. Utah State calls their first timeout of the half. 30 seconds. So timeout for Matt Wells prior to second down, just outside the 11. Boise State defense have given up three red zone touchdowns all year and a chance for potentially back to back. We're covering everything from the field through fantasy. Tops, that other pregame show. Fresh spin on your morning pregame show. Our team of experts led by Adam Shine. Sunday morning, 9 Eastern for that other pregame show presented by DraftKings right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell. Not going to say that you called exactly what's happened in this game, but you had a sense that the Aggies were really ready for this game, this environment against Boise State. My spidey sense was definitely tingling, and the reason why is because when you play good defense and you have a true freshman quarterback that is going to be faced against him and you're down your star running back, that's a very adverse set of circumstances. I'm not surprised by this at all. Now can the Aggies capitalize? Mays takes it to the 10, so it's still going to be third down and long for Utah State. Once again, the first down marker is at the one. I'm not sure if you've ever seen back-to-back, -back, or two out of three drives anyway, where the first down marker was at the one. And with the way Myers has the ability to make plays with his legs, I think you give him a run-pass option here where he can tuck it and go, try to get him outside the pocket on a naked or a bootleg. But under no circumstances should he put this football in harm's way. Myers, the sophomore quarterback, on third and nine. To the end zone, touchdown, Hunter Sharp. The Aggie offense making a statement against the vaunted Boise State defense. The Aggies playing Boise State's game now. A takeaway from the defense, a short field for the offense, and a touchdown to show for it. What allowed that to happen was the fact that Boise State only rushed three defenders. They dropped eight in the coverage once again, and Dante Dion in soft coverage allowed his receiver to get inside for the easy touchdown. Ken Myers had two touchdown passes in his sophomore season. He has two in the first quarter. Look at all this space between here, and they're only going to rush these three guys. He's going to bail out. So Myers has a ton of time to be able to throw this football, and there's our playmaker, Hunter Sharp, putting his foot in the ground and just too soft a coverage and too much time allows the Aggies to go up big here in the first quarter. Big matchup there with Sharp against Dante Dion. Clearly won by Sharp on that one. And Dion had inside leverage that time, meaning he was lined up on the inside half of Hunter Sharp's body because he didn't want him to go inside. Boise State's just not being 
aggressive enough on the defensive side of the ball card. I think they need to pin their ears back and start bringing some pressure because Myers has had too much time, and when he has, he's made him pay. The Boise State fans unhappy with this result. Remember, there was the huge punt return. It was a three and out for Utah State. The big punt return for Shane Williams Rhodes. The Aggies held him to a field goal. Since then, Utah State has taken command. 17-3, less than a minute to go in the first. Jake Thompson's kickoff. Out the back of the end zone, off the hands of Johnson. So Brett Rippon, the true freshman from Spokane, Washington, who had been sparkling, almost inflappable, and his first three games as Boise State quarterback, Three for six, but minus two yards, and then he lost the fumble on the sack. You see him there. He doesn't have that glossed over look in his eye. He seems confident still. We're going to learn a lot about Rippon's competitive toughness here. How does he respond immediately after a turnover? Does he wilt or does he rise to the occasion? We're about to find out. Ripping in the Broncos from the 25. It's Kelsey Young trying to find the edge, and he is wrapped up for a loss. Filiunga, the inside linebacker, drags him down. There's Kyler Fackrell holding the edge. He'll play in space, but he'll also be on the end line to scrimmage. He keeps good leverage there, extends the defender, and then disengages him and makes the tackle. Now remember, one of the strengths of Jeremy McNichols was his ability to bounce to the outside. There again was another play where his quickness could have been used. Minus 19 yards of offense and another fumble by Rippon. A fight at the bottom of the pile. The Aggies think they have it. Vigil knocks it free. Utah State football. Back-to-back -back fumbles by Brett Rippon. Utah State so good at disguising their exotic glitches. They really make it hard for the offensive line to identify where the defenders are coming from. This is just a blown protection by the offensive line up front and Vigil's able to come off that outside edge. Odiambo is going to follow this defensive end that comes here and there's just going to be Vigil off that outside edge. They only rush four, but they have six people. You see Young step up to try to be able to pick him up. But again, you have to wonder if Jeremy McNichols is in there. Does he pick that blitz up? That's minus seven on that play. Minus 26 yards of offense for Boise State. Back-to-back -back fumbles deep in their own territories. First six games, Boise State had lost one fumble. Back-to-back -back possessions, they lose it on sack fumbles. And they do it in the worst part of the field that they could possibly do it, putting their defense in a very bad situation inside the 20-yard line once again. I mean, this is exactly the script that led to Boise State being 5-1, and one, was takeaways, short field for the offense, keep the pressure off your young quarterback. They better dial some pressure up here. I think Utah State probably tried to run here early, but on passing downs, Boise State better bring some heat. Ken Myers, keeper. Takes a big pop after a two-yard gain. Darian Thompson there to end the first quarter, dominated by the Utah State Aggies. 17-3 on Boise State. Utah State has flipped the script on 21st-ranked Boise State, a dominating first quarter in Logan on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. The turnovers have loomed large for Utah State. Back-to-back -back takeaways. And they've come on pass protection situations. The lack of the running game is contributing to these turnovers. Boise State first trying to throw the football a lot and then being forced to throw it because of the lack of the run game. And what that's meant is that they've been struggling in the red zone because of the poor field position their offense has put them in. And so far in this game, that's been the difference. That's Kevin Kloon. 
the defensive coordinator for Utah State, whose Aggies have been getting after it. Hope his mom forgives me for calling the key. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Bloom. Ken Myers delivers somehow. Wow, Myers took the big pop and delivered to Wyatt Houston. Ben Weaver bringing the pressure. Myers does a good job of stepping up, breaks the pocket, turns his back to the defense. It's a naked play. He's out there by himself, but just drops the ball on the money. And I'm telling you what, Wyatt Houston is becoming a playmaker for this Utah Aggie offense for the last couple of weeks. First and goal now for Utah State and Myers. High snap, slant incomplete. Intended for Sharp, covered by Dion again. Just an errant throw that time. Tried to use some anticipation to hit Sharp. Sharp, such a playmaker. So versatile. They move him around a lot. They put him in the backfield sometimes because he's so versatile. He can use, be used as a running back. But inside the five yard line, the field shrinks quite a bit here. But he's somebody that can go up and high point that football. Let's see what they dial up here on second down. Sharp goes in motion. Inside give, touchdown, Luan Hunt into the end zone. <laughs> Through the first six games of the season, Boise State had allowed only seven touchdowns all year. Three on the board already for Utah State, just 31 seconds into the second quarter. Warren's kick makes it 24 to three. The Aggies dominated in Boise a year ago. Are giving the Broncos exactly what they got on the blue turf. Well, Utah State comes out in their jumbo personnel and just gets some good movement at the point of attack. That six offensive linemen, no tight ends. Everybody picks up their guy. And again, another overrun by the safety and a missed tackle. And the Aggies are on the board with another touchdown. Tell you what, Utah State is beating Boise State at its own game. They're running the football when they need to. They're forcing turnovers. These two teams are very similar, but clearly early on, Utah State has showed up a lot stronger than Boise has. Young and Johnson will be back to return the kick. An almost perfect start for Utah State. Takeaway, short field, offense converting. Boise State leads the conference in big explosive plays. This game is far from over, but they got to get something going offensively. Scraper goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Boise State football at the 25 as Johnson just takes a knee. I mean, nothing for the Boise State offense through the last three possessions and all night. You got to staff the run. They got a really good offensive line. Left tackle, Riso Diambo, the center, Marcus Henry. Their right tackle, Mario Yaku, number 66. He's more of a true guard. But in a game like this on the road, you got to do two things. You got to bring your defense, and you got to be able to run the football. So far tonight, Boise hasn't tried to establish the run. If they want to get back in this ballgame, even with the score being what it is, they have to run it. Yaku back in at right tackle. McNichols still on the sideline. So ripping hands off to Kelsey Young, the Stanford graduate transfer. And there is nothing there. Filionga on the stop. Been impressed with this defensive line again. Just a good job of keeping their shoulders square. And they run to the football. There's just nowhere for the back to run. They're canceling gaps and controlling the line of scrimmage. The exact recipe that they want. Griffin delivers complete to the outside of the tight end, Jake Rowe. Biggest pass, pass play of the night for Boise State. And it's a first down. I think they need to go tempo here to try and catch Utah State slipping. Good protection up front. He puts the ball on the money to Rowe. That's what you need to get this quarterback settled down on the road. First time the Broncos have moved the chains. See a diamond formation at the top of your screen. 
Rippin looks that way and then comes back. Almost intercepted, intended for Rowe again. Off of his hands. Rockamore had a chance at the pick. He missed a wide open receiver. Keep your eye right here. There's some confusion there with Utah State. I'm sorry, it's Spurbeck running wide open. They're in some sort of man coverage. And they let Spurbeck go. He comes off of him and tries to come back to Rome. My guess is Boise State will come back to that some point in this game. Rowe goes in motion. Flag down. Motion on the line. from Reggie Smith in a moment. The run of game, defense number 52, using movements with the intent of causing a false start. A five-yard penalty, second down. Rarely, rarely called. That was on John Taylor. We talked about them stemming, and the stem is a pre-snap movement by the defensive line that they use to confuse and disrupt the normal routine of the offensive line, but that time they've got a flag for it. Rippin, play action, roll out, he's gonna dump it incomplete. Trying to check it down to Holden Huff, but it's incomplete, third down coming. This is where Utah State has made their hay. We talked about that competitive nut toughness of Brett Rippon. How's he going to respond here? Can he be at his best when his best is needed? This is an important third down from a momentum standpoint. Hold for tonight on third down. Rippon delivers complete first down Boise State the first third down conversion AJ Richardson's first catch of the year that ball was on the money where only AJ Richardson could catch it in tight coverage and here Boise's using tempo once again immediately after a first down I like it first down from the 49 young can't find the edge Tackle by Kyler Fackrell, the senior from Mesa, Arizona. He was a Mesa High Jackrabbit. Going to be two future NFLers going at it right here. Left tackle, Reese Odiambo, trying to block Kyler Fackrell in the stand-up position. Keeps his outside arm and leg free, disengages, and is involved in the tackle once again. Odiambo had pretty high pad level on that last one. He's got to be able to come off and explode through his hips to move Fackrell off the football. This is Devin Demas slipping his way across the 40 for another Boise State first down. Fackrell on the stop, 12-yard gain. Broncos finding some rhythm. I like this play. They're going to sit here and pull. It's going to be a G scheme where they're going to get the guard to pull away from the football to be the lead blocker. And Travis Averill leading the way for the first down. That's that ground game they need. And here's those trick plays. Rippin tosses downfield, batted away, incomplete, intended for Williams Rhodes. So they go Wildcat with Young back into the hands of Rippin, but. The Aggies were ready. Devin Centers knocks it away. We saw one of the better catches in all of college football this year with Stanford last night running the exact same play, but this time Utah State played quite a bit better defense than UCLA did. Williams Rhodes couldn't go over the back on Centers to make that catch. We saw from the Cardinal last night. Second down, screen, Demas on the outside with a blocker ahead. That's Spurbeck throwing a block to get Demas inside the 35, but it's third down again. I like the strategy that Boise's using here. They're trying to get their ball carries out to the perimeter. They ran some perimeter runs with that G scheme, and now they're basically using some perimeter runs with that high frequency passing out on the outside edge. Here's another critical third down. Boise's got some momentum. They need to keep it going. On the 10th play of the drive. 
You see Utah State standing up. They're going to keep moving before the snap to be able to create some confusion. This is called a radar look. Here they come. Slant knocked away. Intercepted. Another takeaway by the Aggie defense. The third of the night. Torrey Green. Just the second interception thrown by Rippon this year. Three turnovers by Boise State. They came into the night plus 10 turnover margin, fifth best in the nation. But it's the Aggies who are grabbing it away from the Broncos at will. INT to set up Utah State again, already up 24 to 3. All Aggies here in Logan, 24 to 3. Later on in this week's Nissan Heisman Watch at the half, the guys in New York will get you up to date on leading Heisman candidates, weighing who they think will take the sports most coveted trophy. Well, and I, I think it's, you would like to win. Yeah, it's a uh, one-horse race right now, in my opinion, with Leonard Fournette, Javon Boykin finding ways to win games, big numbers. That LSU offensive line, I'm telling you, Leonard Fournette is good, but that offensive line could be better. What they are doing down there in Baton Rouge is extremely impressive. And if that LSU, LSU offensive line doesn't win the Heisman, I think that, that as a unit, they will be a strong contender for the Joe Moore Award. I think they will. They played extremely well. Got a true freshman left guard. Jeff Grimes, their offensive line coach, doing a masterful job. Second and nine. A frustrating start for Boise State. And this was a, a Bronco team that has dominated except for one quarter against BYU when Mangum and... BYU was able to come back and have one of their spectacular finishes. That's Boise State's only loss. Other than that, the Broncos have really dominated, including the road win at Virginia. Illegal substitution, 12 men breaking the huddle. Offense, five-yard penalty, it's second down. Okay, Carter, I tell you what, Utah State, for as good as they're playing tonight, all season long, they're the worst in the conference with penalties. Dead last. You've got to be able to fix those little mistakes if you want to be a team that is going to win this game tonight and control your own destiny in the Mountain Division. They've got to clean up those little errors. Three penalties tonight against Utah State. I don't think Matt Wells agreed with the headlinesman on that call. Roll out for Ken Myers, the sophomore from Rowlett, Texas. Back to the original line of scrimmage gives us a chance to check in with Brent Stover. Guys, good game in Provo. Cincinnati and BYU now tied at 17. Nick Kurtz, beautiful catch from Tanner Mangum. Deadlocked in the third. Carter, Aaron, and Jenny. Right down the Wasatch Range, Brent, in Provo, Utah. Speaking of those BYU Cougars, Mangum. How you know that? What, the Wasatch Rams? Yeah. Come on. Myers, deep shot. Dion bats it away at the last second. Dante Dion keeps it out of the hands of Hunter Sharp. Great job just timing his jump. I like Utah State trying to get a big play and stretch the field vertically. That'll keep those guys on the heels and hopefully open up that running game. And that was a very important stop by the Broncos. And credit this defensive backfield that could be among the nation's best. They certainly have a knack for getting turnovers. Boise State's going to get back in this game defensively. Those DBs got to continue to make plays. Aaron Dalton hits it near the 30. Short punch. Shane Williams Rhodes lets it bounce. And it bounces laterally. Perfectly laterally. It's a strange one. Just a 30 yard punt. Discover Can Am's wide range of industry. Welcome back to Maverick Stadium. The Aggies have a 24 3 lead. And 
And since 1968, Utah State has really provided these fans with some of the best scenery in college football. But as you can see by all this construction behind me, they're undergoing a $36 million renovation. Let's take a look at some of these Go RV road trip facts to see what's changing. While this renovation will include a four-story structure inside, there will be 24 luxury suites, 20 loge boxes, more than 700 covered seats, and an area for hosting student athletes. Hey guys, I know you'll like this. There's going to be a state-of-the-art work area for the media. And the project will also include upgraded restroom facilities and concessions, and it'll enlarge the concourse area and include two new video scoreboards. This should all be completed before the start of the 2016 season. Fingers crossed, Jenny. Fingers crossed for the next time we come back to Maverick Stadium. The new press facilities will be all ready. Yeah, we, we uh, had a good time with Athletic Director John Hartwell last night. And updating us on uh, some major gifts that have rolled into Utah State Athletics. They are truly building towards becoming a major program. And that was a conversation we had with Matt Wells yesterday. Okay, what does it mean if you were finally able to beat Boise State, something they haven't done since 1997? He says, because of the respect we have for Boise State, it would be a huge win for our program. It won't be as if they've arrived. They played in the championship game a couple years ago after losing to Boise State, but it would be a milestone and be a shift in the power here in the Mountain Division. Rippin hands off on second down. That's Kelsey Young. And they make it third down and short, maybe third and one after the tackle by Nick Vigil. Aaron, you, you thought the Aggies were going to come out and play well. 24 to 3 midway through the second. Turnovers. And I think it's Boise State's own fault. They came out trying to throw the football instead of establishing the run on the road against a good defense. They just got away and got behind too early, but now they're committing to the run and they're starting to move the football down the field. Young, the featured back tonight without Jeremy McNichols, and he is dropped as soon as he touches it by Vigil. But he falls forward enough to actually move the chain. So Vigil gets in behind the line of scrimmage, but Young stretches. First down, Boise State. Nick Vigil is such a playmaker, man. He came up and filled his gap with the quickness. Still got the first down, but that was quite a stick. Young dropped for no gain on first down. We check in again with Brent Stover in New York. Carter Greg Ward Jr. is 13th rushing touchdown leads the FBS and he leads Houston to a 21-7 second quarter lead on Tulane. And that's an important one for Boise State and maybe Utah State as you talk about the group of five teams trying to break into those New Year's Six Bowl games with an eye on the other ranked teams. And those outside the Power Five conferences. Boise audibling into another play that they feels to their advantage. Play fake complete. Jake Roll on the outside. Tackled by Vigil. So it is October, mid-October. So we start looking at these group of five favorites coming into tonight. Boise State was at the top of that list to yet again break into a major bowl game. Yeah, what really stands out to me about this graphic is how strong the American Conference is this year. That group of five putting out some pretty good football and a lot of it's being done with defense and watch Memphis Ole Miss that oh, may not funny. be as big of an upset as it may appear to be Paxton Lynch is a heck of a quarterback he reminds me a lot of Travis Wilson full start offense number 66 five yard penalty third down foolish penalty on the road by right tackle Mario Yaku call those coach killers Yaku, who left the game with a leg injury earlier, returned for Boise State. False start here to make it third and nine. Offensive line coach Scott Huff told me that Yaku's his smartest player, one of the hardest workers, really been happy with the way he shows up and goes to work every day. Rippin downfield on third and nine. Picked off again, the fourth takeaway by Utah State. Jalen Davis has the INT and then gives it right back to Shane Williams Rhodes. A fumble off the interception from Jalen Davis gives it right back to Williams Rhodes and the Broncos. That could be more costly for Utah State than it was for Boise State. 
Jalen Davis in good tight coverage does a great job of going up and taking the football away but he gets too greedy here trying to make something happen just careless with the football away from his body not used to being a ball carrier terrible ball skills that time after a really good play by Davis if you're Boise after a sudden change like this take a deep shot dial up your specials try to run a reverse a double pass something here to try and take advantage of this newfound momentum Spurbeck the big play receiver bottom of the screen Rippin looks the other way right into the hand of, of Shane Williams Rhodes the senior who had a touchdown pass last week at Colorado State this is just simple play action get the backers to Overreact to it. Shane Williams Rhodes bobbles it a little bit, but gets control of it for second and short. Rippon's going to hand off. Kelsey Young pushing the pile. There's a flag. Might be a hold. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 97. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Jordan Nielsen. Talked about how good he was with his hands, but he's got his right hand. You can see Avril's face getting turned back. Ooh. Just got to lower your hand location there. It's good inside. That's what you want. Yet good inside leverage is just too high. But inside the helmet is not, it's not where you want to be. be. It was literally all up in his grill. <laughs> all up in his grill. <laughs> Rippin hands off again to Young inside the 20. There's another flag down. Vigil makes the stop. It's going to be Jordan Nielsen offsides when the center put his head up. He followed his head instead of watching the football. Two costly penalties back Offside. to back. Defense number 57. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Nielsen had a great game last week. Four tackles and a sack. I think defensive coordinator Kevin Clune needs to pull him or get somebody else in there. He's hurting his team really bad right now. That's basic football. He's right over the football. There's no excuse for that. Fifth penalty against the Aggies. So into the red zone for Boise State. Griffin's going to hand off to Demas. Takes it to the 19 on first and short. Kyler Fackrell on the stop. This is Boise State's first trip into the red zone. And they're pretty good, 87% overall. Do a good job of scoring touchdowns when they're down there. But I'll tell you what, this Utah State defense is also pretty good in the red zone as well. I think they're going to need to do their best job all season to keep Boise out of the end zone here. Young straight ahead inside the 10. Kelsey Young makes it first and goal, Boise State. Vigil finally makes the stop. And that time it was a missed tackle in the hole by the strong safety for Utah State, Marwin Evans, that resulted for the big game. Oh, man, that's David Moala, the nose guard. He's a heck of a player. This would be a costly loss for the Aggies. If he can't go, he was a guy that we talked about at the top of the show about controlling that line of scrimmage. He's a big reason why they can do that. Mawala, the senior from Inglewood, California, really stepped up both on and off the field since Travis Seafelt was seriously injured in a car wreck in June, along with four others. Mawala, big leader for the Utah State defense. During the break, David Mawala walking off with a little bit of assistance from the Utah State trainers. He's the nose guard in this 3-4 defense, so his job is to hold the point, if you will, which means be a block eater. Here he is right here, and you're going to see him get rolled up on with his legs by the three technique right there. And you're also going to notice number 24 miss a tackle right there. That's Marwin Evans. That missed tackle allowed for the big game. But Carter, we talked about this in the break. Boise State really needs a touchdown. Here. First and goal, 11th play of a bizarre drive where Boise State gave it away, got it back on the same play. Young takes the handoff right in the middle of that 
Aggie defensive line gets just inside the five. And Siwa Tofa in there a nose guard with David Mawala exiting. Yeah, that time the Aggies went to a four down look, and you can't blame Boise for trying to test the middle of that defense with Mawala out. John Taylor in there as well. A senior from Riverside Community College. So big package on the D-line for second and goal. Ripping hands off. Young takes it, stretching, pushing, didn't get to the goal line. Third and goal from inside the one. Just short there. This Utah State Aggie defense is pretty stout. But again, bouncing to the outside is something that Jerry Mc McNichols was very good at doing. Just good stout tackling there at the line of scrimmage. These are where games are won and lost, Carter, right here on the goal line in the trenches, buddy. From inside the one, third and goal. Young takes it and finds the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. In a strange touchdown drive where the Broncos turned it over for the fourth time and then got it right back. They go to the ground game, and Kelsey Young finds the end zone. Jeremy McNichols there to congratulate his teammates after their first touchdown drive. Ross is PAT. Five rushes on the drive. After the interception, it was Kelsey Young who took over. After that bizarre play, gave it back to the Broncos. They gave it to Kelsey Young, and he finds the end zone. Inter 312 away from the Verizon halftime report in New York. Brent Stover, Brian Jones, Rick Neuheisel, and former Boise State head coach. Houston Nutt to take you through a pretty action-packed Friday night around college football. A couple of ranked teams plus BYU Cincinnati right down the Wasatch Range south of Logan in Provo. Boise State trying to make this a game again. Officially it's a seven play scoring drive or a 13 play if you go back to the interception that was taken away. So. Bottom line, it's a Boise State touchdown, and after that bizarre play, it was Kelsey Young leading the way. Well, nine of those 13 plays were rushes. They finally got back to that run game that they should have started the game with, and it was successful. Ross boots it through for another touchback. So some of the stories that uh, certainly we'll be talking about at Verizon halftime report. I mean, this was this was all early in the week. What a bizarre week it, for college football. It was a crazy week. I mean, Florida really has been the story of the SEC so far this year, maybe even college football. And then Will Greer, their standout quarterback that was getting better by the week, gets suspended for PED use. And then what do you say about what happened with Steve Sarkeesian at USC? You just hope he gets himself healthy. There is a solution. I hope he can find it. And then Steve Spurrier announces his resignation. That was questioned by a lot of people, just kind of bouncing and walking away in the middle of the season. My take was he was kind of letting the team move on forward a little bit more quickly, but it does seem kind of strange timing. Screen. Immediately read by the Bronco defense, Darian Thompson and Dante Dion nearly picked off the screen. Carter, you can sense the momentum shift in this stadium. Since that turnover, following the great play by Jalen Davis, it's been the all Boise State Bronco show. This is a very important drive for this defense to get themselves off the field and get the ball back into the offense that finally may be finding its rhythm. Mays in the backfield. Myers is going to keep it on another design QB run. Talked about how it was going to take from Myers both running and throwing to get the job done tonight. And clearly that's how the Aggies have called it. Yeah, a couple weeks ago against Colorado State, it was his legs. Last week against Fresno State, it was his arm. He's going to need both. As they take a timeout here to talk about what they're going to do on third down. But, man, you want to talk about one of the better coaching jobs in America? How about what Matt Wells has done at the quarterback position? Because of the myriad of injuries to Chucky Keaton and 
It has been Ken Myers who he spent the spring at wide receiver. So back to full camp, he moved back to QB, and they have needed Myers, the sophomore, in relief of Chucky Keaton again. And he's done a good job of being balanced. He's thrown some BBs, man. He's been very, very patient. And that offensive line's given him some good time, but you see, he's getting fallen on there by Tyler Horn under a pile of bodies. Man, injuries have been problematic all season long, but he's back out there. He's a tough kid, man. Chucky Keaton began the year, his senior year at quarterback for the Aggies, but now it's Myers. That one's incomplete. Intended for Hunt on third and long. So Boise State backs up the touchdown drive on offense with a stop on defense. Great job that time by the Boise State Bronco D. We talked about the momentum. Three and out, getting the ball back to your offense that has one timeout on a good field. It's going to be a short field. And remember, Boise State won the toss and deferred, so they could theoretically get a score here and receive the second half kickoff. This could be the series that changes this game and flips it the other way. Dalton hits it at the 15. Williams Rhodes, fair catch, grabs it at the 45 yard line. And now we check with Jenny Dell. He was walked off the field with assistance from the trainers. They put a brace on his right knee and then worked him out on the sideline. He shook his head like he was still in severe pain. They brought him back to the training table where they took that brace off, and now he's sitting there with ice on his knee. And you can see just from the look on David Mawala's face, not good. Not good at all. Now it's up to the Aggies defense to see if they can respond. They need a stop here as well. One of the things that's allowed Utah State to be successful is good tight press coverage. Ripping downfield, spur back, targeted, incomplete. Couldn't stay in bounds. Great job of body control by Spurbeck that time. Talk about a wide receiver's catch radius, meaning can he catch the football away from his body? If he gets turned around, just misses getting that left foot inside. Beautiful job of tracking that football. Spurbeck doesn't have a catch after 178 receiving yards last week. Demas dropped. Loose football. Do the Aggies have it again? Yes, they do. Vigil comes away with a football on the fumble by Devin Demas, the fifth Boise State turnover. Edge pressure that time off the left side of that offensive line, and Demas took a shot by Marwin Evans. He had no choice but to let that football go. You're going to see it off this backside edge here. Whack! Perfect form tackle, head across the bow, gets that football out. You see him grab his side in pain right there. You hope Demas is okay. But man, talk about the physicality that the Aggies are bringing to the table tonight. He picked up the wood and laid it. <laughs> Baby. Plus 10 through the first six games, and now minus four turnover margin tonight as Demas gets worked on on the sideline. Well, with the injuries they have at that running back position, that's going to leave Kelsey Young, maybe Jack Fields, maybe Kelsey's brother Corey get some touches tonight. Apparently, they're going to take a look at that fumble by Demas. We look at it again as well. Outside edge pressure. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. That was, that was clearly a fumble. Yes. Man, that's what's so hard about playing this Aggie defense, Carter. Big line dudes up all over the place, and it breaks your rules. Every play that you have has a rule, and you have to assign a hat for a hat. But because of their movement by Utah State, it makes it really hard to pick up guys, and you have a lot of guys come free, and that's when problems occur. Myers delivers to the outside. That's Devontae Robinson who takes it to the 39. Last two Aggie possessions, zero yards, back-to-back -back three and outs. Nice pick up on first down. You have plenty of time with two timeouts with just under a minute 50. 
to dial up your whole offense. You can't take too much time, but you don't have to panic. You need to execute and not turn the ball over. Can't take a sack either. That's the worst thing they could do right now. If I was Boise, I'd bring some heat. Myers pulls it. Has the first down. Shaking his way inside the 25. Ken Myers. Touchdown, Utah State. 39-yard run for the sophomore QB. Simple quarterback counter. They've hit him off that off tackle play with the quarterback several times tonight. The third time he hits pay dirt, and there's those legs we talked about about Kent Myers. He's having a heck of a ball game. Two weeks ago, set a Utah State QB record with 191 rushing yards in the win over Colorado State. And after back to back three and outs. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 76, five yard penalty, try for point. We'll do it again. So Myers, who was slated to play wide receiver this year for Utah State in his sophomore season. But the Aggie coaching staff and Matt Wells thought we need to get him some reps in the fall at quarterback just in case. And when Chucky e. Keaton went down with another leg injury, it was Ken Myers taking over. Tonight, the sophomore QB, 10 rushes, 69 yards, and a TD rush to put the Aggies up by three touchdowns. Well, this is just going to be a counter right here where they're going to bring the backside left guard and the tight end through. It's a counter because the counter motion starts to the left and then comes back to the right in a poor angle again by a safety. Cameron Miles, this time for Boise, results in a touchdown for the Aggies. Tell you what, Utah State's controlling the last image against a top 10 defense, Carter. Boise State is very, very good, and there's some really good perimeter blocking as well. These guys on all levels. Man, that's your star wide receiver, Hunter Sharp, possibly making the key block to spring it. When you have guys firing on all cylinders like that, it's worth celebrating. The Boise State Broncos had been dominant defensively in the first half. 31 points allowed through six games. Tonight, 31 on the board for Utah State. It's a great graphic by the truck that really sums up how this ball game has gone. Johnson's going to bring it out. And that's a difference of about nine yards. If he had taken a knee, he'd be at the 25. Johnson brings it to the 16. Okay, if you're Boise, I think you're better off running this clock out and trying to regroup, especially with as turnover prone as you've been. You may just want to be conservative here and start a new ball game. 21 points with this offense playing at its potential isn't a whole lot. Maybe you throw some screens or do something that's high percentage, maybe a halfback screen, but do not turn this ball over. Rippin slant to the outside for Anderson. Wrapped up as soon as he grabs it. Hines and Fackrell both there on the stop. Is it another turnover? Yes, it is. Anderson fumbles the football. And it's takeaway number six by the Aggie defense. It's a spectacular performance by the Aggie defense, but the Boise State offense is melting down. Tried to tell him. That's right. <laughs> Unbelievable. You can't do it. Kelsey Young's trying to make a play, but that's Kyler Fackrell coming over. That ball is starting to come out. Young just loses it. Nobody even strips it. But because he's wrapped up with two defenders, we talked about tackling, running to the football, a third defender coming over, a fourth. When you fly to the football, good things happen. And Just Carter, like you talked about, A.T. We talked about it a year ago. Seven turnovers, last in the conference. Their last loss was against Air Force. Well, tonight they've got six, and they're trying to repeat what they did a year ago. 
with the Mountain Division driver's seat being on the line. And more than that, how about them being in the driver's seat for the New Year Six position, being the highest ranked conference champion out of the group of five? That's in jeopardy right now. Well, Boise State can hope that 2015 team works out like 2014 because they lost that game at Air Force they fell to three and two and then rallied down the stretch to win the Mountain West and end up in the Fiesta Bowl where they beat Arizona again so you know it was Utah State who came into this game saying it's not a championship game it's not the Super Bowl if no matter what happens we can still win the division confirmed take away by Utah State the sixth of the night worst thing they could have done just turn that football over once I mean how many times have they turned the football over now inside the 25 yard line three turnovers as far as my memory is two of those were inside the 20 you're not gonna win playing against anybody if you do that how about this for Utah State? 16 takeaways in the last three and a half games. That's going to win you some ball games. Myers to the end zone. Sharp. Looking for the call. Touchdown, Utah State. Sharp in the corner of the end zone. Third touchdown pass of the night for Kent Myers. Second to Hunter Sharp. Utah State is routing 21st ranked Boise State. Firing on all levels. Hunter Sharp that had the great block on that touchdown goes up with a contested catch and just wrestles it away. Great concentration. He's not even looking at the football, but he can feel it. And he wrestles it down. They're going to need to take a look at his feet. The call's a touchdown on the field. He's got his right foot that looks like it gets down. And it looked like he had possession of the football card. I think this is going to be a touchdown. Great concentration to go up and get that football. My goodness. Hunter Sharp is one of the most underrated wide receivers in the country, I believe. He kind of popped out on tape with me last year down on the field before the game he's a big physical looking receiver and he used that physicality to wrestle that ball away on that last play that may go under simultaneous catch tie goes to the runner page 30 of the rule book simultaneous catch or recovery a catch which there is joint possession of a live ball by opposing players inbounds. When in question, it's a catch. That might have been close to getting his backside left foot down. They can review it all they want. I think that's a catch. They want to get it right. You got to give it credit to the replay officials. This is a big night for Hunter Sharp, a guy who was recruited by Boise State, set to be a Bronco, didn't qualify academically, so he goes to Antelope Valley Junior College, qualifies after two years at Antelope Valley, ends up signing with Utah State. Coming into his senior year, he suspended the first two games of the season, so finding a rhythm, just getting back for the Aggies, and here he is against the team that recruited him out of high school, Boise State. Hunter Sharp has two touchdown catches if this one stands. Give credit to Jonathan Moxie. That was great coverage. He put his hand in there to try and disrupt it, but Hunter Sharp with both hands clutching that football wrestles it away. And it looks like he maintains possession through the action of the catch, which is what you need to do to remain or retain possession. Moxie, who had a spectacular interception a week ago. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. There's a lot of football left, but this is feeling like a special night for the Utah State Aggies. Man, I told you when we came on camera tonight, I had a feeling you just kind of sensed it that if Boise State didn't show up early, 
and establish some momentum early on in the ball game that they could be in trouble, and that's exactly what happened. It all goes back to that first drive, man. Came out through three passes. Didn't try and establish the run. Got a little too cute. Utah State came out, controlled the line of scrimmage, and found a way to take possession early, and they haven't looked back. Six turnovers now by Boise State. Hard to imagine. Well, it first started with pressure because they were in third and long situations. Kevin Clune bringing it off the edges, up the middle, off the side. Vigil being able to get home. And then it was just the tip drill. Being active around the football and trying to give yourself a chance to play. And then you come off that backside. Man, Marwin Evans jarring the football loose every which way possible. This Aggie defense has brought it. And 28 points resulting off those six takeaways. Three of them, as you said, Aaron, inside the 25-yard line. Carter, in an average football game, Offenses on average get 12 possessions. If you give away six of those, you're not going to win the football game. Safe to say this isn't an average football game. <laughs> <laughs> not tonight, it's not. Another touchback. I mean, this is so much like the Air Force loss a year ago when the Broncos turned it over on the road against the Falcons and suffered their second loss. And some of those were inexplicable, those balls that were getting thrown up. I remember we were scratching our heads going, what is happening here? But tonight, it's Utah State's defense and being aggressive that's been the difference. Utah State has won 11 straight here on Merlin Olsen Field. Boise State, the last to win here in 2003, but 11 straight for Utah State, and Boise State one more crack at it with a minute to go at the end of the second quarter. Well, you've got a minute left, one timeout. You're going to work the edges. Over the middle to the 49. Or over the middle, and the <laughs> clock will stop with the first down, but it'll be a running clock once they get set. It'll continue to run. Utah State needs to be a dip, be aggressive here and come after them. Rippin to the sticks again. That's back-to-back -back catches for Chaz Anderson. Quickly into Aggie territory at the 45. Boise State moving the football using tempo. This could set the tone for what they're going to do in the second half. Historically, they've done it, but with a true freshman quarterback, they've had to slow things down. They may not have a choice but to do that in the second half. Three straight catches by Anderson. Rippon's going to dump this one to the sideline and complete. There is no foul for intentional grounding. Quarterback was out of the pocket in the pass, made the line of scrimmage. Third down. So impressed with Nick Vigil closing on that football. I mean, he closes that gap right away. You see him here, he's bird dogging on the green dog blitz, and then he breaks out. Look at him track him down. He's a heck of a playmaker. Older brother, Zach, linebacker for the Dolphins, made the team as a Undrafted free agent. Rippin almost picked again off the hands of Chaz Anderson. Jalen Davis nearly had another one. These DBs for Utah State are playing outstanding tonight. We've seen even a couple weeks ago that you or the Boise State, their receivers are had cushions, but Utah State is aggressively playing them up at the line of scrimmage, disrupting the route. That extra time is what's allowing that pressure to get home and putting Rippon under pressure. Fourth down in no man's land. Slant caught. First down inside the 35. A.J. Richardson, who has the first two catches of his Bronco career tonight. Clock's going to get running here. There it goes. They still have a timeout left. They may want to take a deep shot here. Rippon with pressure coming. Fumbles. Recovered by Utah State again. That's ruled a fumble and a recovery by the Aggies. The ruling on the field is the quarterback had an empty hand going forward. A fumble recovered by the defense. Takeaway number seven by Utah State. Fackrell strips Rippin. Tyler Fackrell off that outside edge, matched up one-on-one -on -one with Mario Yaku. 
Keep an eye on that football. I don't know. That bar may have been coming forward. They need to take a look at this. Oh, that is close. His arm looked like it had stopped at the moment that Fackrell grabbed it inside of his elbow. Now the ball flies forward, but I think that's more of a factor of Fackrell hitting his arm. I cannot definitively say with that look that it looked like Rippon was moving the football forward, in which case I think it'd be a fumble. The ruling on the field of a fumble is under further review. This is close. Well, it was possible, as you said, to, to think that Utah State defensively was going to be ready for this game. Impossible to think seven first-half turnovers by Boise State. This defensive line of Utah State is whipping a pretty good offensive line for Boise State right now. They only brought five rushers. And one of them, Kyler Fackrell, got home. That arm comes back. Man, it's close. It almost to me, Carter, looks like his arm was moving forward a smidge right before Fackrell hit it. They may get this back. By a smidge. A smidge. That's, an, that's in the rule book, I think. It's an actual word. You can look it up. Mm -hmm. Counts in Scrabble. <laughs> Regardless, Utah State is ready to celebrate an incredible first half. I don't know what your answer is here if you're Boise State, but just to start over and try and win the second half. They're explosive offensively. They lead the Mountain West Conference with 32 plays over 20 yards coming into tonight's game. Averaging almost 500 yards of offense. Scored 50 points three plus times so far this year. They can score, but right now they're just getting dominated at the line of scrimmage. And their receivers, virtually no ability to create separation and get themselves open because of that tight coverage by the Aggies. Big Papa. Uh, replay official Thomas Robinson taking a long <laughs> look at this one. You think uh, Kevin Clune's happy? You think? <laughs> well, if it stands, by Malo gets the recovery, Fackrell with another forced fumble a dominating effort by the Utah State defense in the first half two years ago watching Kyler Fackrell on tape man he really popped he would just show up and make plays last year in week one tore his ACL he's been kind of quiet but tonight it's been his coming out party There's a lot of NFL scouts here a lot of people watching at home number nine he can get a little bit bigger and put some weight on, get in that weight room and stop rehabbing that knee quite as much as he's been. Focus on adding some mass. He can be a heck of a playmaker on the next level. Kind of a Shea McClellan, ironically, that mm -hmm. played for Boise State. Yeah, that arm's coming forward right before he touches it. It looks like he's going for the arm. That's exactly what you want to do as a defender. But Rippon, to his credit, that arm was coming forward a smidge before Fackrell grabs his arm. They got lucky. I don't blame him for taking some time. It, it's close. It is now the seventh turnover by the Boise State offense. 
the third fumble by the true freshman quarterback Brett Rippon. And we talked about it coming in. A guy who is an 18 year old true freshman had been spectacular. In two road wins, only one interception. A road wins at UVA and Colorado State. Four touchdowns, one interception. No fumbles by the freshman in two road games. And yet, week in and week out, you just wondered. After further review, it's been determined that it's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Will the clock operator please reset the clock to 33 seconds? Correction, 17 seconds. 17 seconds on the clock. It's been one of the biggest Thank celebrations you. by the Boise State fans tonight. <laughs> But to their credit, they're at the line of scrimmage and they're ready, man. You got to have a short-term memory. This would be a huge score for them here if they get a touchdown because Boise State, as a reminder, gets this ball back to start the second half. Ripping to throw on second down. Deep shot in zone for Anderson incomplete. But Hines in coverage. Seemed to me that in that time, threw that football a little early. Maybe he heard some footsteps. There was some pressure off that backside. Can you blame him at this point? I, no, I can't. He's usually got pretty good deep ball touch, but just simply overthrew the receiver on that one. Two INTs, two lost fumbles. Third down. Rippin hit as he throws off the hands of Spurbeck, intercepted. There's the seven takeaway, Marlon Evans, and he may take it back. Evans with an exclamation point to a dominating first half for Utah State. 90 yards on the interception and return for a touchdown with zeros on the clock. A stunning 44-10 lead for Utah State on 21st ranked Boise State. The Aggie defense with an immaculate performance in the first half against the Broncos. You know what that look was on his face, but they are playing nasty. Marwin Evans, man. I thought he played well a week ago, having two sacks. He's outdone himself here tonight in the first half, I'll tell you that. Forty-five to ten. This is the end of the first half. Well, keep your eye right here. He's just going to sink. There's going to be man coverage. He's going to sink with that post. And the ball gets high. Rippon saw him sinking, and he had to throw the football a little bit high. And then it's just Marwin Evans to the house. Got that head cocked up, peeking over his left shoulder. And that could be the nail in the coffin for this Boise State team early in this first quarter. I'm... I'm Three turnovers ago, I thought Boise should have kneeled it and went in and regrouped at halftime. And they got greedy, put the ball in the air, trying to close the lead. And you can't blame them for being aggressive, but my goodness. 45 to 10. Jenny is with Aggie head coach Matt Wells. Coach, before the game, you said the key to success tonight would be turnovers. Boise State has now given up seven. How pleased are you with the way your team's responded? It obviously was a big part of our game plan going in, uh, trying to create them and then not giving them up on offense. The key to that is, number one, we've been able to create them, but number two, we've turned them into touchdowns. What a way to finish the half. How do you make sure this team carries on the momentum? Well, that's where the leadership in the locker room's got to come in. We've got to come back out and we've got to play a second and half obviously thank you coach at the end of the first half the score amazingly utah state 45 boise state 10 after the break we'll send you back for the verizon halftime report you're watching college football on cbs sports network presented by geico
21st ranked Boise State, the Fiesta Bowl champion from a year ago, trails 45 to 10 at the half in Logan, Utah. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell. How surprised are you at a 45 to 10 score for the Aggies at the half? I'm shocked, frankly. I knew the Utah State would come into this game and play well, particularly with their defense, but I just didn't think that Boise State would melt down that much and be that careless with the football in the first half. And what did the Broncos do to get to the first in the country? They got takeaways, created short fields for their offense, exactly what the Aggies did to them. Defensive coordinator Kevin Kloon has had a masterful plan. He's put his playmakers in position to make plays and those playmakers have won their one-on-one -on -one matchups they're flying to the football they're continuing to affect the quarterback they're jarring the football loose the tip drill every which way you could create a turnover they've done it and they've dominated Boise in the first half at half time 35 points off turnovers seven takeaways by the Aggie defense I mean this is what Boise State did to Utah State last year in Boise on the blue turf total domination and a critical Mountain West Mountain Division game that's exactly what the Aggies are doing college football on CBS Sports Network presented by Geico I'll tell you this much though, Carter, I think the toughest second half coaching job is going to be Matt Wells keeping his Aggie team fired up. That job's going to be tougher than Brian Harson's to get his team back in this game. Jenny Dell spoke with Brian Harson a moment ago. Hey guys, I spoke with Harson and he said no team wants to be in this situation, but I told my guys to check their attitudes and go out there and play the game of football. He said seven, tur seven turnovers is absolutely unacceptable. We need to eliminate that. And you need to remember, this is the first time freshman quarterback Re Brett Rippon has really faced adversity, but coach said he's kept his composure and he fi finished by saying, what do we need to do? Come out here and score 30. <laughs> At least. <laughs> well, that's an honest assessment from Brian Harson. First carry of the second half. Kelsey Young, and there's Vigil and Fackrell, the main difference makers in the first half. Kelsey Young has to stop bouncing that ball to the outside, especially if number nine's on the line of scrimmage, because he does a great job of setting that edge. And Kyler Fackrell, if you run towards him, he's going to get you on the ground. Kelsey Young, the graduate transfer from Stanford. Blocking now is ripping over the middle complete. That's Spurback. Spurback's first catch and he fumbles and it's the eighth takeaway by Utah State. The second half begins exactly how the first half played out. Wow. I mean, what do you say to this? When it rains, it pours off of play action, just hits a quick slant, beautifully thrown football. Thomas Spurbeck, been such a playmaker for this Boise State team, just careless with the football, gets it punched out for the eighth turnover of the night. Tell you what, man. Jalen Davis, Marwin Evans, the cornerback and strong safety for this Utah Aggie defense. Outstanding tonight. Jeremy McNichols, game time decision. The nation's leading touchdown scorer on the sideline all night for Boise State. And without him, the Broncos sputtered on offense. You saw that amazing note a moment ago. Eight of the last nine Boise State possessions have resulted in turnovers. And look at this. Remember a year ago, that game at Air Force, September 27th, early on in the year, but they had seven turnovers in that game. That was their last conference loss. If they don't change things up here and in a hurry, if their defense doesn't start forcing turnovers, they're going to have their second conference loss in as many years. Now, the silver lining on that again is after that Air Force loss, it was their second of the season, dropped them to three and two. The Broncos didn't lose the rest of the way, won the Mountain West, went to the Fiesta Bowl, won it for the third time over Arizona after they looked terrible in that loss at Air Force. The Broncos look even worse tonight. There's going to be more football during this game and after, but it is a stunning result for Boise State so far tonight. Hunt dragged down on third and one. 
Might have to break out the thesaurus to uh, continue to describe how surprised, shocked, stunned we are along with the Boise State fans. Yeah, the Boise State fans feeling quite lugubrious at the moment. What? Maybe the word of the year in college football. <laughs> That was literally a high five. Did that go out on air? Did I they think hear so. us high five on air? Nerd alert. Dalton hits it at the 36. Shane Williams Rhodes calls for the fair catch. It'll bounce inside the 10. And Utah State downs it inside the five. All Aggies tonight in Logan. 45 to 10. Introducing College football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. By Nissan. Innovation that excites. And by Conoco. Because your car knows. Utah State leads 45-10 in this Mountain West Conference Mountain Division matchup. They were together in the WAC for a while. Not always in the same conference, but the last win for Utah State over Boise State, John L. Smith's Aggies led by quarterback Matt Sock, who had the game-winning touchdown pass with just over a minute remaining to defeat Houston Nuts. Boise State Broncos 24-20 back in 1997. Houston He's with us tonight in New York. Come on, man. Come on, man. Can't let them beat you like that, man. Is that your Houston nut? That's my Houston nut person. Mm -hmm. He's got it in the sentence with now. <laughs> Come on, man. Huh? Boys has got to try and find some sort of rhythm. Just move the chains. Man. Flag down after the carry by Young. The Vigil there on the stop. He scrapes down the line of scrimmage so well, anticipates incredibly well. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense, number 56. 15 yards added to the end of the run, first down. Okay, now, you're Utah State, you got to be careful. We talked about penalties earlier. They had six in the first half. That penalty was Start a the game clock. Clock. Because it just extended this drive and gives Boise a fresh set of downs. That's very careless. Masatoto Schuster playing for the injured David Mawala called for that one. That pass caught by the dragging tight end Holden Huff. Marwin Evans, who had the 90-yard pick six, makes the stop. In short, Utah State's playing man coverage across the board. And Boise State's receivers can't beat it. Even when they catch a football, they're immediately brought to the ground or the ball gets punched out for a turnover. Here's some edge pressure. Off play action, ripping over the middle, juggled Williams Rhodes incomplete. That ball was behind Williams Rhodes. There was some pressure off that outside edge. That time, Kelsey Young did a nice job of picking up the corner blitz off the slot. But you have to wonder if Rippon's starting to feel that heat. That's affecting his location because that ball was behind a wide open Shane Williams Rhodes. Pressure coming. Picked up. Rippon delivers downfield. Williams Rhodes can't haul it in. Lays out. It's intercepted again. They're calling it incomplete. Calling it incomplete. Off the hands of Williams Rhodes. And a flag down. Man. Got to catch that. Holding. Offense number 84. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. Missed opportunities. It's going to be on Jake Hardy. The blowing on the field is an incomplete pass. Just takes a poor angle, doesn't cut the angle, keep his shoulders square. Then Shane Williams Rhodes finally gets that separation we talked about him missing. 
but just simply can't hold on to the football. That barely touched the turf. Barely. Hope your ribs are all right. I was punching you because I thought it was a turnover. <laughs> Field it at the 25, Rodriguez. Andrew Rodriguez is going to reverse field. Cut it back to the 35. Flag is down. Rodriguez is down at the 43. A play like that that changes direction, you have to wonder if it's a block in the back. It'll be another costly penalty that will cost them field position. This is that coaching job I talked about Matt Wells was going to have to do when you got a big lead on a good team. It's easy to let your foot off the gas pedal. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 12. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. Already two second half penalties on the Aggies, but they're up big. Tomorrow, the Home Depot SEC on CBS brings on the best game from the best conference as Jay Coker and the Tide roll against Kyle Allen and the unbeaten Aggies. The hoopla begins with Auto Trader College Football today. Vern, Gary, and Alley have Alabama at ninth-ranked Texas A&M. Tomorrow, the Home Depot SEC on CBS. It's been those hurry-up spread offenses that have been a thorn in the side of Alabama, and I think there's a really good matchup to watch with Miles Garrett and Deshaun Hall, those good defensive ends that can rust the passer so well. Alabama's offensive line has played well, but would they have struggled at times in pass protection? That should be a heck of a ball game. And Myers on the roll on first and ten. Flings incomplete. Flag down. Aaron Logan, Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Ginny Dell, producer Scott Brandwine, director Matt Plundo. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense number 40. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, Armand Nance. Let's take a look at Armand Nance right there. All up in his grill. Third time we've seen defensive hands to the face in the game. Yeah, both of these units do a good job using their hands, but just allowing them to slide up the pads too high. Great stop there. Mays takes it on first down. Tyler Horn leads the way. Boise has to start somewhere. When you're behind this much in a ball game, first of all, you're playing for pride, and you just got to execute. You have to do your job. You don't have to try to do more than your coach would do. Just do your job. If they had done that, they wouldn't be in the situation that they're in. This defense is a pretty good defense. They need to force some turnovers, get some takeaways to get the ball back. Meyer's going to hand off again. That's Hunter Sharp, a wide receiver who takes it on the handoff. Gets out of bounds at the 40 to make it third down, about eight. We talked about Hunter Sharp being used in the backfield because of his speed, getting to the boundary and changing the angles. Darian Thompson was there at that time and just simply got outrun. They were able to break contain on that defense and get to the outside and pick up a couple yards. But here's a third down opportunity if you're Boise. Got to find a way to get this ball back and get a stop here. With all the takeaways by Utah State, kind of lose sight of the fact that it's the Broncos who lead the nation with 13 interceptions. Third down, Correa sacks Ken Myers. Kamale Correa, the junior from Honolulu's St. Louis School, fourth sack, now has one in back to back weeks. Just great job running some stunts up in front. A stunt is an exchange of responsibility by the defensive lineman where they crisscross. And you get separation in the shoulder pad levels on different levels. It just kind of collapses in on you. That's the aggression that Boise State needed to have in the first half. But to their credit, the defense just won their matchup. Now it's the offense's job for the Broncos to bring something to the table. Dalton hits it at the 20. Shane Williams roads, fair catch, backs all the way up inside the 25. 
This week's Conoco Scholar Athlete of the Week is Thomas Spurbeck. Last season, academic all Mountain West, been terrific on the football field for the Broncos, including the Fiesta Bowl Offensive MVP. Last week, 178 receiving yards. Tonight, has only one catch, gained 38 yards, and then fumbled. He's really kind of become the big play receiver in a vertical threat. He was more of a slot receiver, but since Brett Rippon became under center, he's had catches of 46, 51, 53, 64, and including an 85-yard touchdown a week ago. They need to get him the football vertically. Jane Williams Rhodes on the edge, shaking his way across the 30. Rockamore makes the stop. John Trell, Rockamore. Rockamore is a good player. Had a really nice tackle last week early on in that ball game. Came from about 18 yards deep to get a tackle for loss, filling the alley on a run. Play action. Shane Williams Rhodes drops it. That's an incomplete pass. Ran the same play to the opposite side. Yeah, they're just being careless with the football. That's the second drop I've seen from Shane Williams Rhodes in this second half. I mean, Rippon's doing what he can to get him the ball. The location wasn't absolutely perfect, but certainly a catchable football. Boise State's just not making the plays when it has the opportunity. On third and three, Rippon rolling away from the pressure, trying to escape it, driven down by Vigil for a huge sack on third down. Nick Vigil, the junior, from Plain City, Utah, with another big sack. Well, you're going to see here there's going to be pressure. Rippon can step up in the pocket. He bails. He's, he's hearing ghost, man. He's hearing footsteps. That pressure's gotten to him. He could have hung in that pocket a little bit more, but because he's been harassed and under so much duress tonight, he bails out of the pocket, bails right, and the protection eventually breaks down, and once again, Utah State gets home. Midway through the third, Whale punting to Hunter Sharp. Fair catch, grabs it at the 41. Utah State in control. Can the Aggies close out a huge win over the Broncos? Kind tradition brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Boise State winning Fiesta Bowls has become a tradition. Last year was over Arizona. You go back to 2010 against Andy Dalton and TCU. Chris Peterson celebrates. And then it all began. The Statue of Liberty 2007 called by Brian Harson with a proposal afterwards. And Boise State coming into tonight. You think about uh, the group of five contenders to go to a New Year's Six Bowl. Boise State was at the top of that list. My question, Aaron, is if Utah State finishes this one off and goes on a run, can the Aggies crack that New Year's Six Bowl? It's going to be hard. There's going to need to be some carnage on that list that we just saw there. They have some impressive losses. They lost to Utah by 10. An in-state rival, that's got to count for something. Myers deep shot just misses Hunter Sharp. Jonathan Moxie in coverage. And their other losses to a Pac-12 school as well with Washington. That one by a few more points. Maybe Washington goes on a run and beat USC. If they can continue to do well, that might be a much better looking loss. But I think of today's day and age, Carter, to be a group of five team, you have to lose early with maybe one loss or go undefeated to even have a shot. Utah State third year in the Mountain West Conference. Myers is drilled on second down. Miles and Martirano there on the stop. So here's the look at the schedule for Utah State. Again, the only two losses were at Pac-12 schools, including for an injured player. now number five, Utah, and then the loss at Washington. So still have three road games left, including Air Force, who's undefeated in conference. But the Aggies have a potential for a run in that BYU game at the end of the year on CBS Sports Network out of conference. Yeah, looking at that schedule moving forward, I would imagine that Utah State would be favored in every game, depending on what BYU does down the stretch. That's another in-state rivalry. Utah State, man, since the second week of the season, they just continue to improve. It's Jabril Frazier who's down on the play for Boise State number 18. Richard freshman out of L.A. Bourbon Day High School. Plays that stud position. 
Six four, two hundred thirty two pounds. Backs up Kamale Correa, so the type of player that they like to play on both levels with his hand down on the ground, standing up on the end of the line of scrimmage, and even ask those guys to cover out in the flat sometimes. But he's shaken up. Third and ten for Ken Myers, the sophomore quarterback, has taken over Utah State for the second straight season after an injury to Chucky Keaton. Back it was Hunter Sharp. On the lateral, brought down by Sam McCaskill. It's going to be fourth down for the Aggies again. So the Aggies have now gone three straight three and outs on their only three possessions of the second half. In fact, they've gained all of four yards in this second half. They're they held it back a little bit. They're not putting the ball in the air and pushing it downfield like they have, nor should they. They're kind of relying on their defense a little bit, and that's kind of a fine line to walk. You don't want to be too conservative, but you also can't afford to turn the football over and give Boise a spark to get back in this game. Well, relying on the defense is what the Aggies have done all year, and certainly all night. Kevin Bloom, man, I'm telling you what, getting ready for this game. It was some next level blitzes off the edge. Dub a really nice job of disguising the coverages. Puts a lot of pressure on the offensive line. They don't know where the heat's coming from. It's hard for them to be able to identify. And man, towards the end, Rippin just feeling the pressure and the heat, getting a little bit of happy feet inside that pocket. And I'll tell you what, that man's not going to get a game ball at the end of this one. I don't know what you could do to get one. I got a couple other nominees. Yeah. Rippin. Incomplete. Tell you what, one of those is Kent Myers and what he's done throwing the football. He early on in this half, he threw some BBs and to you take Utah State's credit, they were aggressive when they got those turnovers in the red zone. They wanted touchdowns and they got them. Brett Rippon and the Broncos on second and ten. To the sideline complete to Jake Rowe. How about Nick Vigil and Kyler Fackrell have combined 23 tackles, two sacks, five tackles for loss. With outside linebacker Fackrell, inside linebacker Vigil. Yeah, Vigil's brother, next level player. Looks like he's going to be on to the NFL at some point as well. Kyler Fackrell kind of getting back to his old self from a year ago. These guys are impressive playmakers. Rippin pressured again on third down. This time delivers Shane Williams Rhodes. Converts on third down across the 40. Must have been a busted coverage that time. Shane Williams Rhodes was completely wide open. That was a nice first down and pickup. And to Rippin's credit, he stood in the pocket and delivered a completed pass. Broncos go hurry up. Young bounces outside. Dropped after a three-yard gain. And Tyler Floyd, a senior from Orlando, on the stop. I'll tell you what, these safeties, as we see, keep an eye right here in the way he comes down and fills this alley. This ball's bouncing to the outside. He's a contained player. Just does a nice job of Coming down and setting that edge. Ripping deep shot, Spurbeck has it. There's a flag down. Second catch of the night for Spurbeck. That's on Jalen Davis, if it stands. Bodie, defense number 17. The penalty is the crime result of the play. First down. Carter, the way to beat man coverage is to isolate or cross. This time, they're going to run a fake bubble screen. Spurbeck's going to sugar it a little bit like he's going to block, and then he takes off. Just a beautifully designed play. Pitch and catch for the first down. Broncos driving for the first time in the half. Rippin. Looking for Spurback again, off his hands, incomplete. If you're Brett Rippon, you can't throw a more beautiful ball any better located than that last pass. On the money. Spurback's got to catch it. 
play before, 26 yarder to spur back. The first play for the Broncos, 20 plus tonight. For a team that has been explosive, especially last week against Colorado State. Rip and play action, zips it incomplete. Yeah, this Utah State defense in terms of giving up big plays. Extremely good. Only four teams so far given up this year. They lead the Mountain West Conference by limiting those explosive plays. Just yet another reason why they're one of the best defenses in the country. They make the earn. On third and ten, Rippin delivers. That Spurback keeps his feet. Takes it all the way inside the two yard line before Jalen Davis. And that's now 29 yards as Rippin and Spurbeck back to their rhythm. Yeah, that time they got a little too aggressive. Spurbeck finds the hole in the defense. And Marwin Evans, one of the only mistakes he's made all night, and it was a big one, putting the ball inside the five. First and goal, Broncos. Young hitting the backfield. Pushes ahead back to the original line of scrimmage. Penetration causes lost yardage plays on the run. Nick Vigil unblocked off that outside edge. Boise's got to do something to account for that. They've got a ton of tight ends on this team. They need to get in their jumbo packages, try to create some bigger surfaces to block to be able to create some running room. Second red zone trip. Demas is the back. Takes the toss. Devin Demas. Finds the end zone, touchdown, Boise State. Second touchdown of the year for the junior from Houston, Devin Demas. Great job by Demas finding the end zone. That time Boise State up front did a really nice job of pinning the defense and getting outside, breaking that contain. Getting into the end zone. Comeback has started, Carter. He called it first. Rossa boots it through. There's a long way to go for Boise State, but Devin Demas does his part into the end zone. What if the 45-17 now, Aggies on the Broncos after that 10-play touchdown drive that ends in Devin Demas's second rushing touchdown of the year. Well, we talked about those guys need to make plays. Here's Kyler Fackrell peeking into the backfield. He's going to allow himself to get hooked this time by Jake Hardy. That's the key block on this play to be able to get to the outside edge. Up until that last play, Utah State had done a masterful job of widening and corralling and forcing everything back inside. But the good block out there on the perimeter allowed for the easy walk in for the score. I like that vision cone, Carter. Mm, it was an outstanding vision cone. Maybe my best of the year. Best of the night for sure. That'll be a touchback after the bobble in the end zone. Things starting to get windy here in Logan, Utah tonight. For more, let's send it down to Jenny Dell. Hey guys, a quick update on Boise State freshman defensive end Jabril Frazier. It looks to be a left hand or wrist injury. The trainers brought him over to the sideline and it looked like they were testing his strength in that left hand. He just walked off the field a few minutes ago. I'll update you when I hear more. Thank you, Jenny. So Frazier out for now for Boise State. Kamale Correa back in there at defensive end. And there's a new quarterback for Utah State. Damian Hobbs is going to take over. The sophomore from Cedar Hill, Texas, who has attempted only two passes this year. So Hobbs in there on a relief of Ken Myers. And Hobbs, redshirted a year at Oregon. Runs the zone read to the 32. And he is a runner. That's the thing that he does the best. And they're going to pull him out and put Kent Myers back in there. But he's a nice change of pace. And with all the injuries that they've had at quarterback, I'm surprised we haven't seen a little bit more of him tonight. But the coaches have done a really nice job of being able to roll him in. In the unlikely event that Kent Myers gets hurt, Damian Hobbs would have some nice real reps underneath his belt. 
Aggies have had success bringing quarterbacks from Texas. Chucky Keaton, Ken Myers is from Rowlett, Damian Hobbs is from Cedar Hill, Texas. Yeah! Look at that play. Mays breaks free. Mays dragging the Boise State defense with him to the 20. A 48-yard gain on the run from Devontae Mays. I just wonder if Boise State was lined up wrong because there was such a big hole on the backside. Now, big runs come on the cutback. He's going to come here and then bend it back as these guys come upfield. There's a huge running lane right inside there. There's nobody home. The safeties take poor angles. And once again, it's another big play by Utah State on the ground. Biggest by far of the second half. Screen to the outside. That's caught by Andrew Rodriguez, who goes spinning inside the 10. The junior from Allen, Texas, transfer from Houston. What allowed that play to be successful is Kent Myers threw it immediately. He threw it on time, which allowed the receiver to be able to get with it and run with it after the catch. Bam, sets up, delivers it on time, perfect location. Another great block by Hunter Sharp out there on the perimeter, and it's another first down for this Aggie offense. Much more aggressive, Carter, on this drive than they've been at any time in this second half. First and goal, Damian Hobbs back in. Perfect in the red zone tonight. Three for three touchdowns. Hobbs pulls it on the zone read again. Damian Hobbs all the way inside the one. He wanted that touchdown, buddy. He was fighting hard for it. Oh, now Hobbs is going to check right back out for Myers. Oh, man, Hobbs doing all the hard work down there. Great blocks at the point of attack. Just some good hard running down there. Boise State's defensive line not getting off their blocks. They got to be able to shock and shed those guys and cancel those gaps. Utah State's offensive line doing a really nice job here. Nearing the end of the third quarter. Handoff touchdown to Vontae Mays. As soon as Boise State finds the end zone to think about making it interesting, the Aggies respond. Devontae Mays touchdown, 51-17. That all got set up by running the football on the ground. Just great blocking up front at the point of attack. Crushing the right side of that offensive line, just collapsing that defense of Boise State. And I'm going to say this, something I haven't said in a long time. It looked like Boise State's defense laid down on that last series. Mm -hmm. Mays had only nine rushing yards prior to that drive. He takes it 50 combined. A 48-yard run setting up the two-yard touchdown. Devontae Mays, fourth rushing touchdown of the year. In fact, his fourth in the last two weeks. The Broncos have been exceptional all across the board. Hadn't allowed a second half point in the previous four games, but Utah State has another feather in the cap. What they've been able to do tonight against Boise State. The guy brought a plunger to the football game. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I want to tell you where my mind just went <laughs> back. <laughs> I want to keep working with you. Yep, yep, yep. I might have just saved my job. <laughs> Another touchback. Broncos will get it at the 25. College football action tomorrow. Full slate of games, including another Mountain West showdown. Air Force, who was undefeated in the Mountain Division at Colorado State, and struggling UCF at Temple, who is having a terrific year. That's presented by Geico, 7.30 Eastern. Part of that triple header tomorrow, CBS Sports Network. So, Air Force undefeated still in the Mountain. Boise State, Utah State enter the night both undefeated. And you think what happened to Utah State a couple of years ago. They lost this game. Drippin goes deep. Spurbeck hauls in a terrific grab inside the 40. 
this is the Boise State offense that we've known to cope, to, to, to love. It's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. He just beats the jam in the press and gets separations, able to accelerate to the football. That's something that they've struggled to do, but that's just beating one-on-one -on -one press man coverage on the perimeter. One more play in the third quarter. It's a run to take it to the 35. Headed to the fourth quarter, 52 to 17, Utah this State is, on Boise yeah. State. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Our Dairy Queen fan cam showing a rocking student section tonight here at Utah State. Credit the Aggies and the Aggie Athletic Department and the university for putting those students where they should be, right there down on the field. Good seats for the students, so they set the environment here at what is now Maverick Stadium. They came ready tonight, and they have seen their Aggie football team put on an epic performance. 52-17 on 21st-ranked Boise State as we Go to the fourth quarter. Hey, right there. Met that gentleman. I can't come up with his name. Second down. Ripping. Sacked again. Wow. Jordan Nielsen gets him this time. Nielsen just splitting the block between the center and the left guard. Here he is right here. He's just going to spike around. And the penetration, the center oversets. The guard tries to come over late to help him. But that pre-snap movement looks like he got a little banged up on that, but he certainly got home for the big sack. Very, very active defense tonight for Utah State, man. Wow. Griffin hit as he throws. Short, incomplete. There's a flag down. That might be on Kyler Fackrell. He smoked the right tackle that time. Mario Yaku on an inside spin. Move. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number nine. A blow to the head. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. I don't know about that call. I mean, maybe with the, the grab of the right hand on the back of the helmet, but he looked like he was trying to grab his shoulder. That was kind of ticky-tack. Can't touch him anymore. Heck of a pass rush move, though. Got Yaku to overset. Yaku did a good job of recovering, but gave up too much ground while he did it. It is the ninth penalty on the Aggies. Rippin leaves that one high and incomplete. Intended for Chaz Anderson. Man, I'm telling you what, Kyler Fackrell is making his presence felt tonight wherever he lines up. He's finding a way to get himself home. I believe it's right here off that inside, coming inside, just staying alive. Look how he fights through the blocks, doesn't give up. Better believe that that last little bit of pressure affected that throw by Rippon. Third hurry that Kyler Fackrell has forced tonight. Play action, Rippin delivers. That's Anderson. First down inside the 15. Boise State putting a nice drive together, moving the football. Soft coverage that time. They found a hole in the defense. It looked like the cornerback, Deshane Hines, slipped a little bit, which prevented him from breaking on the football. Kelsey Young, room ahead. Touchdown, Boise State. But there's a flag down. This one might be coming back. Nick Vigil got there first. Holding offense number 66. Five yards, 10 yard penalty. Repeats first down. That's Yaku, the right tackle right here at the right of your screen. Keep an eye on his right hand, left hand there. out the touchdown run from Young. Costly, costly penalty. Rippin, screen incomplete. Trying to set up the tight end screen to Jake Rowe. On a screen, you do want to give ground and allow the defense to come upfield. That's exactly why you run it. 
is to slow that pass rush down, but that time Boise State's offensive line let the penetration in too quickly, and that penetration negatively affected the play. Oh, the irony. Rippin' slant incomplete, and he takes another big pop. Does Brett Rippin. Man. Tell you what, he's a tough kid, though. This is a true freshman on the road in an adverse environment, playing against one of the better defenses I've seen. Tell you what, that could have been a penalty there that time by Devin Sinners. That was more of a penalty than the one called on No Mac question. Rush. No question. Aggies bring pressure again on third and long. Rippin delivers deep, intended for Anderson. Off his hands, incomplete. And another penalty. Voting offense, number 39. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's Kelsey Young. Correction. Utah State is out there to decline the foul. It's fourth down. Kelsey Young trying to pick up another strong safety blitz. Kevin Clune is emptying his call sheet, bringing the pressure, which is unfortunate because I don't know again that Brett Rippon could have thrown a more beautiful ball than he did to Chaz Anderson that time, but Anderson dropped it. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, but you got to give credit to the true freshman quarterback for hanging in there tough and continuing to compete. 41-yard attempt coming from Tyler Rossa. He hit a 46-yarder to get the scoring started for Boise State tonight. Boots that one through. So the new score, 52 to 20. Living in the moment. It's not an easy thing to do these days. We're all so connected. Except to the things we should be. If you just happen to be joining us and you think that score is surprising, 52 to 20 in the fourth quarter, our Bud Light up for whatever moment of the game was just prior to half, the seventh takeaway by the Utah State defense, a 90-yard interception return for a touchdown from Marwin Evans that made the score 45 to 10 at the half. Or the fourth quarter, it still surprises me to say that that was our halftime score. Been pretty impressive, but Marwin Evans, the beneficiary of some pressure in Boise State's quarterback's face that didn't allow him to step into that throw, and ended up sailing on him. And anytime you throw high over the middle, bad things are going to happen. And that was one of many for Boise State here tonight. Marwin Evans from Oak Creek High School in Milwaukee. Our statistician Wave Robinson once scored 42 points in a game against Oak Creek High School in Milwaukee. Hunter Sharp brings it back across the 31. There's a flag down. Wave attended high school in Milwaukee before Marwin Evans was playing for Oak Creek. Didn't he help found Milwaukee? He <laughs> settled it way back in the day, didn't he? <laughs> oh. Wave Robinson on stats. John Tobias spotting tonight. All over a wild one here in Logan. There are two fouls on the play during the return. Holding, receiving team number 39. The penalty is declined. Holding, receiving team number 18. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So here's what's ahead for Boise State coming out of Logan. Back at home next week against Wyoming. The two road games left are at UNLV and at San Jose State, who is a contender on the West Division. And then the Air Force game. And boy, it's going to be a potentially jumbled picture. Yeah, the benefit for uh, Boise State is New Mexico and Air Force are similar option based offense is that they get back to back that's going to help them with their prep but then they get Tyler Irvin of San Jose State on the back end to end the year they got a chance to rebound Damian Hobbs back in at QB takes the hit from Cameron Miles Hobbs 6'2 220 pounds out of Cedar Hill Texas in the Dallas area 
led the Cedar Hill Longhorns to the 5A Division II state title game. Went to Oregon for a year, redshirted. Now in his sophomore season as an Aggie. Carter, on that last play, they ran some orbit motion, almost like a reverse type of action, if you want to think about it in that respect. If they handed that ball off, that would have been a touchdown. Watch Utah State coming back to that, maybe to the other side. Utah State calls their first time out of the half. 30 seconds. Had a substitution issue. Getting sloppy here in the fourth quarter. Manuel is forced to use the timeout because of the substitution. Eight turnovers tonight by Boise State. That is the most by any team in the FBS this season. The UTSA turned it over seven times against Oklahoma State. The Broncos have turned it over eight times against Utah State. But it's also been dropped passes. It's also been poor tackling. I mean, there's a lot of blame to be able to go around on this team about why they're in the position that they are. And at this point, it's not even about fixing the blame. It's about fixing the problem here for the Broncos. And yet, two years ago, Utah State lost this game to Boise State and won the division. So, that's complete to Rodriguez on the edge. Yeah, and that's something if you're a Boise State fan, you got to keep in mind, as bad as this looks right now, assuming that they lose, it's still only one loss. To your point, they could still very much be in it. Boise State is a good football team. They're getting beaten tonight by another good football team that has executed better than they have. But all is not lost if you're a Bronco fan. There's just still a lot of football to be played down the stretch. We're in mid-October here. But they've got to be able to find a way to pick themselves up off the mat to finish this game and to head down the stretch for the rest of the season. Third and short. Aggies convert with the run from Devontae Mays. And one of the things that you notice with this Boise State team is that they've given up more rushing yards tonight than they have all season long. And it's kind of been a trend for them done an outstanding job of stopping the run all season but as the season's kind of progressed Carter they just seem to give up more and more rushing yards it's a trend that they're certainly going to want to reverse Hobbs back in at QB drop for a loss on this first down carry, Taima Tuia gets the tackle for loss. So you begin with just 29 yards allowed in the win over Chris Peterson's Washington team, the former Boise State head coach. 105 last week. Now they dominated that game against Colorado State, but the Rams still rush for 105. And now 151 tonight. After that BYU game, it's been a negative trend in the wrong way. Boise State's got to figure out a way to get that trend reversed. By the way, Boston College, number one in the nation against the run. Boise State came into tonight, number two. They're pretty stout. One of the teams that Boise State's going to be competing with for that group of five New Year's Six opportunities is going to be Temple out of the American that has a heck of a defense this year. See him tomorrow night on CBS Sports Network against UCF. Third and nine here on Merlin Olsen Field. And off to Sharp again. On third and nine, the Aggies will punt. You're Utah State, you gotta be careful here. You're being very conservative and you're taking time off the clock. But don't forget who's on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Boise State has shown you, especially with Thomas Spurbeck tonight. I mean, he's dropped some big passes, but he's also caught some really deep balls. And again, Brett Rippon, his location and accuracy, as much pounding as he's taken, has been pretty impressive. Utah State offensively is taking the foot off the gas pedal. Their defense can't do the same. Boise State still has plenty of time to make this an interesting ball game. Dalton hits it at the 15. Williams-Rhodes wrapped up as soon as he grabs it. 
inside the 32-yard line. That's Cameron Hartsfield with a solid special teams tackle. Protect your smile with an invisible shield against plaque. Act advanced with plaque guard. A 32-point lead for Utah State on number 21, Boise State. The beginning of this game, we talked about our key questions, three of them. I think we have our answers, and all three favor Utah State. Yeah, Utah State beating Boise at its own game, controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. It's been all over the poor true freshman quarterback, Brett Rippon. Three interceptions, two lost fumbles, constantly harassed. And what's the McWeapon factor? McNichols didn't play. Boise State only 18 rush yards. Happy meal or grimace? Mm. I think the uh, hamburger. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I can't even do it. Uh. Oh, my gosh. Another fumble. Rippon picks it up. Releases, hit as he throws, knocked away. There is a flag downfield. As Brent Hayes gets tangled up with Thomas Spurback. Now remember, in college football, there's no such thing as face guarding, so it's going to have to be for contact. He had pretty good inside position. It almost looked like he was looking back for the football. We need to take a closer look at this. It's kind of a moot point now that the flag's been thrown. Pass interference. Defense number 22, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, they're certainly trying to take a deep shot. He's got great inside position. He's got that left arm against his body, but man, that could have been a face mask on Spurbeck, too. That seemed like there was some mutual uh, flim flarn going on there. They could have left that flag in their pocket. Rippin. Complete. This is Spurback running after the catch. Well, Spurback has had another big night. He had only one reception in the first half, but Spurback now five catches in the game. He was banged up on that last play, got up very gingerly. What I like about him is how fast he accelerates once he gets the football into his hands. It'll be a 149 yard receiving night for Thomas Spurback. Thus far, Rippin delivers. What a catch by Jake Rowe. Goes up to grab it. The tight end snares it inside the 20. Man, there was some heat coming off that outside edge by Kyler Fackrell. He's really putting some pressure on the right tackle, Mario Yaku. Man, just what a way to by Rowe to go up and get that football. Rippin again, dropping a BB. Hands off to Kelsey Young. Battering his way to the one, the fifth year senior from Norco, California. This was what I was talking about. Utah State taking its foot off the gas pedal. You can't sleep on this Boise State offense. Still plenty of time if they punch this in to make this a ball game. Young does just that. Touchdown, Boise State in a hurry. Kelsey Young into the end zone. So a 52 to 26 game and still 809 left. Just controlling the line of scrimmage that offensive line taken over really nice block that time by Reese Odiambo to come down inside on the next level to the second level to block Nick Vigil pin him in dig him out and allow for the room for the touchdown. Boise State is going for two. Not often do you have on that sheet that tells you when to go for two a 52 to 26 score. <laughs> when you're down by 26. So going for two. Rippin, nobody open. So he will. Two defenders run into one another, allowing Rippin to release it. It's incomplete, but friendly fire as the Aggies take each other out on the two point conversion. Touchdown for Boise State, but it's Aggies 52-26. There's a bank that didn't just ask members to save, but also helped them to save. That allowed families to keep... It's going to make you as a business... Aggies on the verge of beating 21st-ranked Boise State. 8.09 to go here in the fourth, so... The last time Utah State lost at home, they won 11 straight. The last time they lost at home was Boise State 13.
Haven't beaten the Broncos since 1997. Mentioned a couple times, that was John L. Smith over Houston Nutt. Last time they beat a ranked opponent at home. This is surprising because the Aggies have had some big wins here. Last time they beat a ranked opponent at home, 1991 versus Fresno State and the WAC. Is that Trent Dilfer? Trent Dilfer was actually the backup quarterback in 1991 at that point. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Do you know who the starter was? I don't. Yeah. Got to get on the horn to the truck so they can help you out. Mark Barsotti with a nod to Brian Kozlowski in the truck. <laughs> oh, man. I see you, Koz. I'll tell you this, Carter. This next drive is pretty important. They need to watch onside kick. Looks like they're setting up for it. Recovered easily by Utah State. Monday's 6 Eastern, if you just can't get enough, Adam Shine. Check out NFL Monday QB delivered by FedEx. Adam and his cast of NFL quarterbacks breaking down the action from the week before. Week 6 action, check it all out. Monday's 6 Eastern on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now, if you're Utah State here, I don't care if you get a score, but you do have to bleed some time off this clock. you got to get some first downs and limit Boise State's opportunity to get themselves further back into this ball game. Hobbs, the quarterback, keeps Thompson on the stop. No game. Hobbs is the better runner of the two. They've had some success running that quarterback power and counter off tackle. If they bring Myers back in, they may have to throw it here on second down. But I like the first down call of a run because the clock is ticking. Generally, in a four minute situation, which is what you call this when you're trying to bleed the clock, you usually let the play clock run down to two seconds and snap it then. You better hurry. Carson has to, or Wells has to call a timeout. Utah State calls her a second timeout. 30 seconds. Terrible, terrible clock management right there. Well, this is to the point about when you said at halftime that the tougher coaching job in the second half was Matt Wells in Utah State because of trying to maintain solid level of play. Man, it's human nature. It's complacency. You know you have a lead. You know you're most likely going to win the ball game. When you're 19, 20 years old, it's easy to just take a little bit of that pressure off. When you have a Boise State team that's got a ton of talent and a lot of pride, they're not going to give up. They're going to play much harder in the second half. And that's what we've seen. The Broncos have closed the gap that Utah State had gotten in the first half. It's also one of those coaching situations where there's enough that went wrong in the second half no where doubt. you have teaching points. That's On the toss, Sharp takes it for a first down. So the toss to Sharp, he picks up that first down to allow the Aggies to run some more clock. And technically that was a pass where they threw the football there to pick up the first down and move the chains. But that's Hunter Sharp again. We talked about him being a playmaker. Out on the perimeter and underneath center, if you will. They're just going to let that clock tick, tick, tick. Whether they score here or not, if they can get it around the four-minute mark, it's going to make it very hard for Boise State to win this game. They go back to it. This time it's Robinson turning up field. Devontae Robinson. Tackled by Chancellor James and Joe Martirano. Andrew Rodriguez, the tight end, had a really nice block there. His hands were inside. He was trying to be able to hook the defensive end, and he couldn't, so he turned him out. Just a good job by Robinson cutting up inside of Rodriguez's block for the nice game. Take it right down to six minutes before they have to snap it on second down. More motion. Myers pulls it this time. QB run. He goes down immediately to avoid taking the hit. Very, very smart. 
Heads up play. Boise needs to think about those three timeouts. They've got some time, but they've got to score so much. At some point, they got to get this ball back. They're just going to run out of time. I mean, they would have to score, get onside kick, score, get onside kick, score, get onside kick. That's unlikely. That's what I'm saying. They may want to think about using some timeouts just to preserve that time. But, man, we, we talked about it in our meetings, right? Like, Boise State drove here tonight. Right. Or yesterday, anyway, opting not to fly. That's a five-hour bus ride, and we joked around in our meetings with Coach Harson. So it's like driving to Vegas. It's a great idea going out. Not so good on the way back home. Uh, Hunt takes it to the 21. Now this is exactly what Utah State wanted on this possession. Nobody had contain on that. The defensive end got sucked inside. Left his responsibility. They were able to get up to the second level, move the chains. Tell you what, man, this offensive line for Utah State did a pretty admirable job. As bad as the offense was for Boise State, their defense is pretty dang good. And they took their lumps here tonight as well. Hobbs pulls it. Finds the edge, stays in bounds. Dante Dion makes the tackle on Damian Hobbs. That high tackle by Dion that forced Hobbs to hit the ground like that was lucky because Hobbs, with his momentum, probably would have went out of bounds here and stopped the clock. I think he got lucky here. Would have been very hard for him to slide down inside the out of bounds mark. Key number on that drive is the time used 408, 409. Officially two passes, but those were the shovel tosses. So run it again with Mays. Just a couple. Perea and James on the tackle. And this is the this is the possession that Utah State needed to just ice the game, whether there's points on the board or yep. not. Enough possession to close out what is a, a monumental win for the Utah State football program. And they, they've won conference titles. They won the WAC outright in 2012 when Boise State wasn't in the league that year. They've won bowl games. They've gone to four straight bowls. They've won the last three. That's huge for a team who went from 1961 to 1993 without playing in a bowl game. This is... This is a terrific era of Utah State football. First under Gary Anderson and now under Matt Wells, who is his offensive coordinator. And this is one of the most significant wins of the era. Boise State calls their second timeout. 30 seconds. That's their first timeout, I think, right? I believe so. I, I was wondering when they were going to start doing Correction. that. Correction. This will be television timeout well so we might as well take it with them we'll see you on the other side it's intelligent enough to warn of college football on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance by E-Trade opportunity is everywhere and by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper in college football. It's a one-of-a-kind tradition. Dr. Pepper, always one-of-a-kind. This is a heck of a way to kick off the weekend in Logan, Utah, with a dominating win over the team that has dominated the Aggies and dominated the Mountain West Conference and the WAC before it, the Boise State Broncos. And on this drive, Ken Myers and the Aggies trying to close it out. Wow. Hits that pass complete. First and goal. Swindle makes the catch. And this Boise State defense that has been so terrific now. I have to say that a lot of those are because of the takeaways. But 52 allowed tonight. Most since 07 when they gave up 67 to Nevada and won the game. Well, little different result tonight. How about that last pass yeah. by Kent Myers, man? I mean, it, the, the Boise State defense getting gassed tonight certainly is notice, or notable. 
But so is them throwing it on third down to pick up the first down. How much trust they have in that young quarterback. Hunt takes it inside the five. When you talk about big wins for the Utah State football program, began in 1892, this football program. They didn't go to a bowl from 61 to 93, then they won the Las Vegas Bowl. Matt Wells was the quarterback on that team when they won the Las Vegas Bowl for their first bowl win in program history. They're going to win this game with Matt Wells as head coach in his second year. It'll be the first win over Boise State since 1997. Hunt takes it to the two. Carter, this drive started with eight minutes and eight seconds left in the fourth quarter. This offensive line for Utah State, Austin Albrecht, then Wysocki, Tyshawn Mosley, Austin Stevens, Tahani, Fisi Lau, and Jake Simonich. My goodness, they played excellent tonight, particularly here late in the fourth quarter to bleed the time, to ice the game, to ensure that the Broncos couldn't get back in it. Offensive line play at its best. Third and goal play. Myers hands off to Hunt again. Whether Utah State scores or not on this possession, this is the most points that Utah State has scored against the Boise State team. And this is now projecting, with all precincts reporting, that Utah State is going to beat Boise State tonight in Logan to go to 3-0 atop the Mountain Division. Air Force has Colorado State tomorrow. And the celebration is on in Logan. For Utah State, you want to score here. Myers is going to hand off. Hunt stood up. Will not get in. So it's Boise State football, but semantics. It's a 52 to 26 dominating win for Utah State over Boise State. And credit that Boise State defense down inside the five yard line, playing with some pride and preventing the touchdown. But you're right, Carter. It was all Aggie tonight. The first upset of the college football weekend is Utah State over number 21, Boise State, dealing them their first conference loss of the year. First win for the Aggies over the Broncos since 1997. And it was no doubt. Ripping in his end zone. Because they're in the end zone, almost forced to throw it to try and. <laughs> Man, I would sneak it and start that five hour drive home if I was Boise State. And the Aggie students are ready to celebrate with their team. I mean, it's wide open to the quarterback's left. Brett Rippon just dump it off and hopefully somebody misses a the tackle. There you go. On Spurbank goes down, and that'll do it. It's a 52 26 win for Utah State over 21st ranked Boise State. It's been a long time coming for Utah State to celebrate a win over the Broncos. a well-deserved celebration a dominating performance by the Aggies tonight and the students storm Merlin Olson field Day to get a win like 
like this against a quality opponent with everything that you've gone on and gone through early on you have to have leadership that steps up and emerges and tonight that leadership came on the defensive side of the ball for the Utah State Aggies what an incredible performance Kent Myers doing an excellent job delivering the football but there were a lot of great individual performances. Marwin Evans, my goodness, Jalen Davis, Nick Vigil off the edge, scraping down the line of scrimmage. Kyler Fackrell, unblockable in moments. Vigil and Fackrell combined for 25 tackles tonight. Is that pretty good? That's pretty good. Good. 25 tackles, five tackles for loss. Oh yeah, gonna be some good selfies in that celebration. Two forced fumbles for those two as well. One from Vigil, one from Fackrell. That's a pretty good Boise State offensive line coached by Scott Huff, a former Mountain West Conference player himself. But man, they have their lunch handed to them today. As badly as Boise State dominated the Aggies in the critical game in the Mountain Division last year in Boise, the Aggies repaid the Broncos tonight. Eight takeaways in the game, seven in the first half. It was 45 to 10 at halftime with a ranked opponent down 35 points. And the final score, 52-26. Utah State head coach Matt Wells in that celebration with Ginny Dell. Coach, you said the road to the Mountain West Championship goes through Boise. What does this win mean to your program? It means everything. Um, I said that out of respect to their program, where they've been, what they've done. Um, but, you know, it, it puts us in the driver's seat, but I'm so proud of these kids. The last time Utah State beat Boise State was in 1997. What about the job that this team did tonight? So many individual performances that were just superstars. It's hard to even start with individual performances, but what a great job by the defense early on and creating turnovers, and then we were able to flip it into touchdowns and, and really just hung on at the end. Congratulations, Coach. Okay. Go celebrate. Thanks so much. Matt Wells, the Utah State alum, the former Aggie quarterback. He's had multiple chances to leave Logan, Utah, but he stays for moments like this. A 52-26 win over Boise State for Aaron.